after terrain here. I was questioning that earlier. It looks like we might be transitioning into a little bit less of a linear. Yes, we definitely don't have those same very fine layers anymore. And Go so uh, whenever we do see a rock that might be loose, I'd kind of like to uh, pick it up just to see what kind of terrain we're in now. I still think, though, we're very heavily encrusted here, so finding one will probably be uh, difficult. So an old dead sponge. You can still see the, the fibers. Mm-hmm. Nice. Go ahead. Is that a shrimp? It looks like it. Where are you looking? Yeah, uh, where? Oh, I oh think I see it. Over yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Shrimp. Oh, look at those super long legs. Go for zoom. Hello, shrimp. All right, so we have a daddy long legs with those little legs. <laughs> what is that bug? Oh, and what is what is this here? Whoops. Hmm? Oh, I see what you're talking oh, about. Can we yeah. zoom That's on really that? small. Oh. Good eye there, Megan. Yeah, I like the, the I like the little ones. You want to play with lights a little? See if you can get it to light up a little better. Uh, we're we got another 10 degree heading change coming in. We're at 070. How are they doing on the thrusters? Are they struggling? Uh, you can go for zoom. Nothing crazy. Okay. Bow thruster max is looking like 50% or so. So, you know, working but not super stressed. Okay. This coral has an associate. Oh. So small. Is that a little anemone associate? I don't know. To me, it kind of looks like Go a wide. snail. Oh, could be. But I couldn't quite tell. I can't. I can't stop thinking about the little associates as <laughs> carrying briefcases. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> they have lots of meetings. It's it's completely in, <laughs> ingrained in my brain. Yeah, now. they're all talking about trying to make partner one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. oh, the shrimp or the mussel? <laughs> <laughs> the amphipods inside of a glass sponge are like hiding out. <laughs> yeah. They're the oh spies. My yes. <laughs> now I just want to see a holothurian again. It's been a little while. <laughs> Ooh, oh, can we look at this stock friend. sponge? Yeah. So we do have biology here, but it's very sparse and spread out. Mm -hmm. And that might be a loose rock. Ooh. Could we potentially poke this rock? Yeah, we can. Hmm. Go for zoom. Oh, wow. I oh, really beautiful. like these sponges. Mm -hmm. Kelly, are you ready for a rock poke? <laughs> <laughs> can okay. we can we change the lights on this again? Yeah, I got it. What did you do before to get those drama shadows? Did you turn off something? Okay. Oh wow. I like the shadow. It adds drama. It's 
<laughs> Good point. All three shadows. All of them. <laughs> and the lasers. Can we get the lasers on the sponge? Sure. Like little eyes. <laughs> oh, I like oh. that. Okay, cool. Wait, was that for science? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no of comment. course it was. No comment. We wanted to measure the we size are the of the sponge. <laughs> Go on. Everything we do is for science. Uh -huh. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay, now oh, sorry. we're ready for That's a rock. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh, that's actually rock. way too big, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, very big. It's a really big rock. Yes. Okay, we don't need to look at that one. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's good. I couldn't wait. <laughs> What a rock are they interested in? The one that's way too big. Oh. That one. Raj. The really, really big one. Yeah, I have high aspirations for the bigger rocks. <laughs> like, I really like this one, too, even though I know it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> Points at the Earth's Your crust eyes. yet again. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes Gestures. are too big for that ROV. <laughs> Amber, we appreciate you. We need, <laughs> Thank we you. need people to hold us to a high standard. Of the whole entire Earth's crust. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean this little fish won't do that for us? <laughs> no, no. This little fish is just chilling. Pilots, <laughs> we're changing heading to 6060. Zero, zero. Okay. Roger. It does look like the trail's wandering a bit. Um, Alexi doesn't seem to think we're having any trouble holding position, but we are wandering slightly. Okay. Okay. I'm going to keep my eyes on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems reasonable. Yeah. It's nothing dire, but definitely something to watch. I was talking to Aaron about this earlier. Um, Go for Zoom. What is this? I think it's an old stock of something covered in hydroids. Yeah. And then behind it, there's a little white stock. Yeah, I see it. Okay, go wide. Ooh, sea urchin. Oh yeah. Go for zoom. Wow, I could not see that. Good eyes, guys. It's because I'm looking for a good angular rock. <laughs> <laughs> you looked right at the angle, and you're like, oh, well, I'm just here. Oh, can't get <laughs> this. <laughs> Birch is I guess. It's, it's <laughs> living. I can't have it. Where is it? It's an anemone. An anemone. Oh, oh yeah. Say it anymore. is an anemone. I did a wrong ID. It is, like, rounded with what it, looks like spikes yeah. coming off. Yeah. It really so. did look round and spiky. Okay, <laughs> go on. Forgivable. <laughs> For now. Yeah. For now. You're on Just probation. don't let it happen again. <laughs> Fool is one, shame on us. I don't know, something like that. Sure. On thin crust after that one. Mm -hmm. it's on thin crust after that wrong ID. Oh, oh, we're going to start the geology jokes. 
Oh, my. It feels appropriate. <laughs> oh, goodness. That is a good one, though, Thank on you. thin crust. I like it. Ship's heading is going to zero five zero. Okay, copy that. As long as it's intentional, it's good with me. He's he's putting in the moves. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh but I dropped a target so I can monitor how badly we're drifting off. Could we look at this rock in the middle? Yep. Go for zoom. That oh, looks attached. that's going to be attached. Yeah. Go ahead. This dive site does not want to give me a good angular rock. Yeah, it's really steep. I feel like a lot of what might be loose is already at the bottom of the hill. Yes, mm -hmm. and then Which very is what, 6,000 meters deep? Yeah. <laughs> Where's the bottom of this hill, uh, Nia? Like, how deep is the bottom of this? Of the bottom of the feature? Of the seamount. Oh, that's a great question. To zoom way out, I'll tell you. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, I I think the quick answer is going to be it's like the abyss, and it's probably like 4,500 meters. Okay. Um, I actually don't have a way to tell you from high pack without oh, counting see, all yeah. the contours. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't oh count on the Z value. It's brutal. Yeah, it's not a high pack. All the joys. Um. Oh, um, ship movement wise. Okay. Um, it looks like he moved his, he doesn't say that, um, he's still showing one meter from his goal. Right. Um, Amber, you want to remind the audience what you're hoping to find during this watch? I'm hoping to find angular rocks that will hopefully, uh, be volcanic in origin and have a very thin crust on them so that when I break them open, they'll have visible uh, minerals in them that I could then crush and date to find out how old these seamounts are. Awesome. And what about you, Miss Mary? Tell them what you're looking for. Uh, well, I'm looking for more octocorals, specifically bamboo corals. Uh, and one that looks like a whip that suddenly started branching when it shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> sparse brancher. A sparse brancher. <laughs> Got it. Megan has taken to calling me the sparse brancher. That's right. <laughs> so I'm looking for bamboo corals. So for those of you who are tuning in, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to send us your questions. We're happy to answer. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yes, she does. Let's go. Oh. Do you want to do a swap? Okay. It's okay. okay. Bridge, now. Could we step two zero meters bearing uh, 359? That happens. Yeah. Some, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. I mean, you can ask Trevor, like, on the next cruise, like. <sighs> Someone in the audience would like to know, is there a reef at the top of this sea mount? And where are the nutrients coming from to support all of this life? It's a good question. Well, <clears throat> the top of the seamount is around 1,500 meters. So there isn't uh, like a shallow water coral reef or anything like that, but we are going to keep seeing deep water corals along this dive. And um, life in deep, deep water corals and life down here is feeding off of nutrients in the water. And this is a guillot, so at some point it was at the surface and eroded down to create that flat top. So it probably did have a shallow reef feature at one point in the past. Uh, two zero meters bearing 359. We are falling off. <laughs> Roger. Bridge dive. Hey, Alexi, uh, it looks like in Hypec we're falling off of station. So we're having a little trouble holding position signs. OK. Um, and we'll just try and keep on top of it, keep you posted. But Roger, um, it's been this is this happened like 20, 30 minutes ago. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, 30 minutes ago. Yeah, Weather Watch 2. I like it even more than the than the actual dive information, like the actual telemetry. <laughs> okay, we're coming off at half an hour. Yeah. So uh, and we're going to come back into that wall. Okay, so, so let's you might want to come up. Um, I don't know. Ten is fine. I'll stay in your view for now. He may need to actually do a restart, so this could take a while. Bridge nav. Uh, we're still trailing off. Roger that. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and keep and drive this, which means coming around to. Uh, um, you can come up a little faster. Yeah, come. I'm gonna try and come around to your two seven zero here. <laughs> Luckily, he's staying at 0.7. I can drive 0.7.
Um, can you ask the bridge to turn on the aft lights? Uh, can you come around and look at me? Because that's the actual direction we're traveling. Uh-huh. Good call, Nia. Thank you. So I think uh, it looks like uh, 240 for our direction of travel. And you, you can keep coming up when you have uh, a little space to do that. Okay. We'll just keep an eye on the wire. It's point eight knots. I do not see any um, issues out ahead of us right now, so. Sounds good. Um, Neo, what's the depth that you anticipate us intersecting the next ridge at? You see what I'm asking? I want to know what to park the vehicle at. I don't want to come up more than we need to because that's going to affect like the rest of the dive. Okay. Okay, let's keep coming up then. And I'll try and keep up with you. And uh, is he restarting the DP? I don't think that that's the right answer. I think he needs to try something else. Yeah, he's still going at point eight, so he should do something different. What's up? Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're at, oh, sorry. Yeah, awesome. Um, and we're at the, f basically we're above the depth where we're gonna intersect the next, next ridge and we're way ahead of the game. So I feel like we're in pretty good shape. And you would have done great. We would have talked through it. You would have done great. We're slowing down. We're getting the like, team team observation of the system down pretty well. Yeah, we really do. Mm. 
So we're relocating to a different part of the seamount? Um, actually, right now, the ship's having trouble holding position. In a sense, Brandy, yes, we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Actually, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have corrected you. That is exactly what we're doing. <laughs> um, and we've slowed down. We're, at, we're going point one now. And okay. we don't typically yeah, we don't come up share this two-way conversation between the control room and the bridge, right? I don't know if the bridge is... It's the bridge the would bridge. have to... The yeah, bridge would have to talk on, on SPL. SPL. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Anna, Ryan, I didn't mean to step on you. Um, yeah, we're, they're just having a little bit of trouble holding position, and so we picked up off the bottom um, to make sure that, you know, we didn't end up someplace... Got it. Thank you, Santa Cruz, California, for tuning in. Hope we answered your question. Someone says, over how much time would it take for the life form to descend from the top reef of the ocean floor all the way down to the bottom on a scale of months and years? Do we know how to answer that question? Oh, okay. That's a deep question. Okay, thank you. I think it would depend on what was falling and where it was falling and how deep and if it was little particles like marine snow or if it was a whale fall or something much larger, its rate of descent would be quite different. And marine snow, it takes a long time to reach the bottom, especially in currents. It can get swept off into different directions. And so I'm not sure we could really pick one speed, um, yeah. but Certainly it takes a while to accumulate. There, There's some people who try to figure out sedimentation accumulation rates mm -hmm. in certain areas, but that's quite difficult, especially when there's currents that can just get blown around. Mm -hmm. Our scientist Amber is, is going to try to figure this out mm -hmm. with help from the internet. Go, Amber, go. Oh, this is actually interesting. This is from Woods Hole. Um, marine snow can sink as fast as 200 meters per day and can reach the bottom in just a few weeks. Oh, wow. I don't know um, which area this is referring to, so I'm looking more into it. Nice. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> that is good news. Partially good news. What's the word? What's the good news? That we're f that we're falling off our heading, but in a good direction. Mm. <laughs> in a, in our safe direction. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> but we're safe. Safety is good. <laughs> I would call it marine snow.
<laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> oh, which is the one that we skipped. <laughs> 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 you come back here. <laughs> He's not pleased with us. Interesting. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> we went down the chute. <laughs> Herc just wants to go skiing on these slopes. <laughs> well, we can do a midwater transect to get back to where we were. <laughs> okay. So what do we think about how position holdy we are these days? He's going to call you, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Um science? Yes. When this does get dialed in, um, what do you want to do? Do you want to go visit Waypoint 4? Do you want to do a <laughs> midwater transect back to... <laughs> I would like to do a midwater transect and then drop down to roughly where we were before. Okay. If we're a little bit further than we were be where where we were before, that's fine too, but let's not okay. backtrack. Okay. Um, what is our... What's our heading going to look like for that? Um, Neff, for getting back to where we were. Zoom out on Ravnav and follow that gray line right back. <laughs> zero two five. Okay, I'm gonna bring myself around to zero two five relative to you. Sure. And then you can bring your head heading there too. Okay. A viewer is asking: Are you finding correlations between surface level? phytoplankton and seabed organisms, organisms such as corals and sponges? Any correlations? Um, I think that would be relatively hard to study You'd have to first have someone that's really good or uh, that studies the surficial uh, and shallow water. Mm -hmm. And then in the same area, in roughly the same time scale, also have an ROV dive deep down to see what's beneath. I um, think? I think you could do it. A lot yeah. of ships have a seawater system running on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the surface in the ship. Oh, ah, um, and yeah, you, a flow through seawater system, and people will do things like run like flow cytometry or something like that on that um, on that water. Um, that wouldn't be weird at all, actually. Hmm. Um, this ship doesn't have a flow through seawater system, but I've seen it done before. Ooh, good to know. Zero two five, yes. Sometimes, um, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Sometimes they even use seawater for engineering purposes, which I think is really exciting and cool. How do you mean? Uh, I, boy, don't ask me to explain this. Uh, the Okeanos <laughs> Explorer has some kind of a sort of membrane seawater comes in 
and it helps to power things. Oh, the I don't electric have good electricity words for it. creation via the the seawater. I don't think it's electrical. It's, it has something to do with uh, like using the density of the seawater to like move things around. I this is terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're doing great. The engineers can explain it really, really well, and it's an extremely cool system. But like, I don't. It's been too long, and I didn't understand it well enough when it was explained to me for me to like reiterate what it does. Ah, I think I've looked up? it up. You got it. Um, a new I'm form sort of, of sea power. No, I think we're good. I'll head down. You develop a membrane that can harvest energy from the seawater. The technology relies on the process of osmosis, where water or solutes, like salt, can move across a semi permeable membrane in order to balance concentrations. Of course, it. this was just a little summary that it gave me, so that's where it cuts out. Hold on. This does, it sounds familiar so far. Do you remember that movie, Osmosis Jones? Ah. Yes. If it's water disgusting. moves across a membrane, a it movie, creates it's a pressure I, on one side. It's a movie. It's a show. It's a feature film. With, so this is a cartoon, though. It's a show and a movie. Oh. And I have a character named Drix. I didn't know it was a <laughs> show. I do remember really? the movie, yeah. Oh, well, they had a whole show. control my screen. Oh, am I? Oh, gosh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I there was like, was where a am I? Of <laughs> this you remotely came over here. <laughs> fellow screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that woke me up. Megan just wants me to uh, SEF. <laughs> I was like, what happened to my screen? <laughs> and I started poking around. And <laughs> <laughs> Not my screen. Ah, blue energy. So how does this work? Osmotic power. Apparently there are two ways. Hold on, let's see. No to do. Thank you for joining Nautilus Live. Hope you have a wonderful day. Currently, our pilots are Kylie and Gabby. That's us. That's me and Kylie. Someone was Aww. giving Dan a shout out. <laughs> I made a, um, a styrofoam cup here. for us. Like, oh, he's wonderful. not here. Yeah. <laughs> he's one. You gotta remember to put him on. It's not his yeah. watch. Excited. And I, um, <laughs> that voice. Shout out to Nate in Paris, who's watching Marine Snow. <laughs> <laughs> we are moving back to the seafloor slowly. Are you looking at the visitor stats? Who, me? Mm-hmm. No. Uh. <laughs> Looking at the stats over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where's... Yep, we got one person from France. Welcome. Welcome. 
Hello there. We have someone asking for some reintroductions. Ooh. Well, I can start off with myself. My name is Brandy Jones from Houston, Texas, serving as Science Communication Fellow. And I'm here to help answer questions as the team explores. And right next to me is... My name's Amber Saravalo. I am sitting in the science chair. I'm from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And next to me is the watch lead. Hi, everybody. My name is Megan Lubetkin, and I am the watch lead for the 12 to 4. Hello, everyone. I'm Mary Dury. I am the data logger. Video engineer, you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Leung, and I am the video engineer, and I am from New York. Okay. Our pilot's busy. Front row, can y'all reintroduce yourself? Stand by one. No problem. Currently, we are transitioning to a different area, uh, exploring the western ridge of an unnamed guillot northwest of Kingman Reef, outside of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument, where we are hoping to find some encrusted angular volcanic rocks and some biological samples, more specifically, some bamboo corals that are <laughs> sparse. Sparsely <laughs> branched. Sparsely sparse branched. branched. So thank you for tuning in. And currently our ROV pilots and navigators is having some conversations about where we're headed to so stay patient and momentarily they will chime in to the science party line Hi, Sydney from Australia. Bruce SCF Sydney is Australia. a science communication fellow, so I'm just here to help facilitate the live feed of questions as our scientists and ROV pilots and video engineer are exploring so that they don't have to get too distracted on the mission. That is my purpose as an SCF. Science Communication Fellow. Welcome, Mexico. So happy that you are here. Welcome to Nautilus Live. Shout out to Murphy in Providence. Hey, welcome. For joining us for some marine snow. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting. This is the 12 to 4 watch. We're here for four hours.
We have Misty from Australia asking about some of the highlights of our exploration so far. So many. Right. Uh, that jumping anemone will always be my answer. Mm -hmm. um, that was so cool to see, watching it swim. Yeah, that was really cool. We've seen some beautiful jellyfish. Beautiful different corals and, uh-oh, help me with this one, Amber. Um, how did I forget it? The one that Gabby said that she was on time out for. What do we call those? Holothurians. Yes, we've seen many different types of holothurians. Welcome, Indonesia. Happy to have you here. We are moving. Um, if you are on Nautilus Live, um, Camera one is showing the marine snow. And if you look at camera two, you will see our remotely operated vehicle, Hercules, which is tethered to Argus, giving us a little light so we can see deep below the ocean. Someone in our audience would like to know, does this specific research contribute to tackle climate change in any way? And if so, how? Um, right now, so a lot of these places are unnamed and unexplored, so we don't quite know what's there. So it's kind of like getting a baseline so that we can, in the future, study impacts of climate change. Yeah. Science, uh, we are making moves to head back to the slope. Roger. Um, Welcome, New Kent High School of Oceanography. Well, we have a four-hour watch in the morning, a four-hour watch in the evening, and now we try to get as much sleep as possible within those, around those two watch schedules. So, you know, as soon as our watch is over, either we have ship to shore interactions, they go sleep, scientists might have to go to the wet lab, um, do a little data. Y'all want to tell about some of the things you do to, and how you get your rest? <laughs> they yeah. want to know, how do we sleep during these crazy hours? Ooh. 
however much I can. <laughs> and when I can't, lots of coffee and caffeine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, right after watch, either you eat, go sleep, uh, go ahead, take samples out of Herc if it's the end of a dive. Go ahead and process them quickly so that they can be stored and then go to sleep. Mm -hmm. All the sleep. <laughs> we all have very weird sleep schedules right now. <laughs> very. Ryan, how are you adjusting to your sleep schedule? Um, I like barely sleep before a midnight watch. But when we get off at 4 a.m. Hawaii time, then out like a light. Out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a cute comment. Someone says um, during the last watch, um, they said if they had a t-shirt, it would be Zoom Dave. And then they think if we had a t-shirt during this watch, it would say Raj. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Kylie can't. Kylie is busy right now, but when she gets back on SPL, we'll let her know. The control room is quite cold. Um, the red lights kind of help us because we look at the screens a lot. So it makes it easier on the eyes. That's the purpose of those red lights. I wouldn't say cozy unless you like to like cool air. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do like to sleep in a colder room, so this doesn't help me. Stay awake at all. <laughs> well, someone would like to know how the sample survived on the last dive. Did the tube and anem an enemy make it up together in one piece? Yeah. It, oh, ooh, that's a cool Hold jelly. on, we've got a jellyfish. This is our. This ooh. is one of our favorites. That's awesome. Pretty. Nice. Here to join us on our midwater transect. <laughs> can we can we try playing with the lights with this guy? Yeah. So Mary, this is called a hydro medusa. I think so. That or is some type of it. That's oh. like a very name. Oh, nice. So oh, pretty. That's a beautiful shot. That would Great. be a very broad term. Hydro Boy. Medusa? Very broad term. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that name makes sense for this one. I think it's a some type of hydrozoa. <laughs> and so they can either be in their polyp or Medusa stage. So Hydro Medusa. <laughs> oh, do you think we could um, get it in the still cam? Yeah. Oh, so pretty. Oh, it's okay. If it's no, no, no. It it took off. Yeah, Roger that. But um, back to those samples. That tube anemone did make it up in one piece. What's that? Which one? Some uh, the tube anemone. Oh yeah. It came up in one piece, and yes, some of those corals were quite slimy. Yeah. Very slimy. I have. A picture Profuse. of mucus. <laughs> so much slime. Mm. Mucus. Yeah. All that mucus. <clears throat> Welcome, South End, England. Um, 
They want to know what does a 24-hour day look like. We have two on watches um, that <coughs> last four hours each. And within those time frames, we eat, rest, and do work. Uh, what work looks like for each of us is a little different because we have different roles on this expedition. For example, I do ship to shore interactions with classrooms all around the world, whereas our scientists go in the wet lab and characterize, classify, and preserve the samples and get them ready to go to specific places around the world for specific research. And our ROV pilots are always making sure that Hercules and Argus is in top shape, making any repairs or tightening, tightening up things. So work looks a little different for all of us. But what remains the same for all of us is that we have the 12 to 4 watch, which would be noon to 4 p.m. and midnight to 4 a.m. Nia, are you there? Oh, no. Hey, sorry, I had you guys uh, turned down because I was talking to the bridge. That's okay. Um, when we look at the quad screen, the bottom, I think it's the bottom right, is that the position of the ship? Oh. Uh. I can't actually see the quad from where I am. Wait, let me. Oh. Bottom right for me is the studio. Oh, oh let me see. see what it's like a, um, it's like a little map with the yellow triangle. The it yellow look, triangle. It looks oh, like. Oh yeah, I think that's the ship track that you're looking at. That's a, I think a Grafana thing. Okay. I would have to look at it to know for sure, but I'm. From the, the yellow triangle description, and it's like a blue background with like a, mm -hmm. a line that's all over the place. Yeah. I think that's the ship track that you're looking at. So that is our position, and I don't know how often it updates. Yeah. Welcome, Canada. Bridge, Nev. Let's step five zero meters, bearing zero two five. Thank you. Um, to answer your question from Canada, um, this is in a 365 days of the year type of expedition. So when we come out here, um, even though it's a, a rigid schedule, there's no burnout because coming here, it, it's something that we have a passion for and we love to do. Um, and so, for example, next week will be our last week out here at sea, and then we go home and rest, recharge, relax, and get back to our day-to-day -day routine. Well, for me anyway. Do you all want to share <laughs> what everybody. it looks like for you? <laughs> yeah, so that's for me. <laughs> There's no burnout. 
<laughs> I go back. Never. Who's that? Go back home and go right back to class. Really not. <laughs> yeah. So some going back to class. Oh, they're gonna be so happy to have you back. Like, <laughs> <your> people. <laughs> so do you lay? Do you struggle with um, burnout, pilots and? No, I, <laughs> I'm optimal all the time. Yeah, all right. 50 days of working straight, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so we work seven days a week, and it can approach, like, 12-hour days. Um, and I we get what we call, like, toasty. Um, <laughs> Do you know what a brownout is? <laughs> yes. That's a good way to describe it. We get tired. <laughs> Everything still works, but we start to flicker. <laughs> Sometimes we arc out. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'll be out after this next, I have five more weeks on board, and then I'm home for five weeks, and then I'll come back for five weeks. Okay. Yeah, my longest, and my longest time out this year is going to be 52 days. All in one trip, but how All many sea days do you have? A lot. Oh, like a hundred and ten, I yeah. think. Wow. Yeah, something like that. A hundred. I'm ninety this year, which yeah. is my best, my longest. That's my, awesome. That's my most in a contract. So, like, year. it's a really funny, it's a really funny place to be because, like, on the one hand, we're like, oh my god, fifty-two days. On the other hand, we're like, we need more days. Yeah, there's oh. not enough to this live on. <laughs> 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 it's tricky. It's a delicate balance yeah. between mm -hmm. like trying to like just like keep your Keep your life together and yeah. mm. like totally keep your edge. life together. Yeah, how long can I balance my shore life and my land life without one of them just crumbling? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we get toasty. <laughs> toasty. <laughs> and a little flickering light. I, know, I like that. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a cute a way of saying it. Everything works, but we start to <laughs> flicker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you come out later in the season, you can start to tell who's been on <laughs> for a long, long time. Because usually they're just like nowhere, anywhere social. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like so happy to see them and they're like, yes, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell me about your summer. <laughs> it's a little bit like getting somebody off an island that's been marooned. <laughs> I mean, the ship is a little island isolated yeah. from everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many islands are not, are actually not isolated from everything. I feel like many islands and archipelagos, like, are, can feel very connected for the people who live there. So we're even more isolated. But I, I think that the ship really does feel like an isolation. I like to think of it as a closed system rather than isolation. Because we we can't oh, we can't that's nice. get off the ship. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd say we're a partially closed system. Energy can leave the ship. That's true. For me, <laughs> but I matter actually well. struggle harder coming back and then like crashing from not being at sea and then the anxiety of having like millions of choices when I had no choices for a very long time. I know, I'm about to have to go grocery shopping again when I go home. My goodness, that's the worst. Ugh. It's so hard. <laughs> what do I eat? I don't even know what I eat. Oh, I don't recall not the anything worst. I've ever cooked. <laughs> that is fair. good. That's fair. See previous conversation about toast. <laughs> They're toasty. Welcome, Frank, uh, from Liverpool, UK. Frank wants to know a little something about the eDNA samples. Hello, Frank. Uh, he wants to know, can it detect uh, color selection for the coral colors? Like, oh. oh, I don't 
Interesting. I don't think so. I, I think, well, I think or if, I don't think if they it, look for that. Yeah, I think it, if if you could identify which coral it was with the D with the DNA traces in the eDNA, and that coral only had a specific one specific color, then we could back out and say we knew the color of the the species. But I'm not sure if we can do much better than that. I yeah, I don't think so either. I'm also not super well versed in eDNA. I know just kind of the basics. I have a question. <coughs> yes. You know how like scientists, uh, researchers um, have a talent for acronyms? <laughs> yes. Yes. Are you about to ask what eDNA is? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I mean like research projects. Um, yeah. Like I did one that was like Ripple cuz like the the um, they're yeah. always funny names. Yeah, the PI yeah. was in well he was a really big fan of uh the walking uh, not the walking dead, excuse me. Um what are those that band dead dead uh the Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead, them. Thank you. <laughs> the, the Walking Dead, the Talking Heads. <laughs> the Grateful the Dead. Grateful dead. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Thank you. I won that one. But anyway, the um, that was an acronym for research at the intersection of phytoplankton and particles, li lipids, and exports, which basically just means, you know, like fish poop. <laughs> 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 like, really? We looked at marine snow. That's all we did. <laughs> Do you have any interesting uh, acronyms? I know I uh, yeah. went out to see for a project called Deep Search, but I don't think it was an acronym. For <laughs> anything. I think they just called it Deep Search. <laughs> Gabby, <laughs> Gabby, you like <laughs> Oh, 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 you can look, you can look them up. Welcome to 12 to 4, honey. <laughs> All right, the here we go. The best watching. The best watch on, in town on the ship. <laughs> These are the craziest acronyms that scientists use. Brains, <laughs> Biobehavioral Research Awards for Innovative New Scientists. <laughs> Weird, Western Educated Industrialized Rich and Democratic. What? 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 Okay. what? I feel excited. That is not, <laughs> <laughs> not saying the next one. Clarity, <laughs> Clear Lipid Exchange Anatomically Rigid Imaging Tissue Hydrogel. That sounds very scientific. They That's stretched that Y. They do. Too. They yeah, did. They the hydrogel, they used the y. the y. Inadequate. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, skip. <laughs> Incredible natural abundance <sighs> double quantum transfer experiment. Looks I like they used the QU for quantum. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Derp. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yes, DERP, Drug Effecti <laughs> Effectiveness Review Project. DERP. Oh. Flamingos. What? Did you, did you say the one? These next two are a little out of... <laughs> Florida Multi-Object Imaging Near-Infrared GRISM. I don't know what GRISM is. Observational Spectrometer. Gandalf. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and There's flopsy. I used to call NOAA there. the National Organization of Aggressive Acronyms. <laughs> 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 that's the one to top them all. <laughs> that's, a, that's excellent. Get them right where it hurts. <laughs> Sometimes you got to have fun with your science. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I was part of Subsea, which was a project here on Nautilus. That's a good acronym. What does it stand for? Oh gosh. Yep. <laughs> uh, brought it up. Yep. Um, Wait, I bet it's Systematic in the Underwater Biogeochemical Science and Engineering Analog. Whoa. Ooh, I long. just pulled that out of my mind, so that's pretty good for yeah. three in the morning. That is awesome. <laughs> that was kind of impressive <laughs> to remember all of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it makes sense, though. It's actually fairly. Yeah, Especially at three in the morning. That's why they use the weird acronyms. Yeah, it works. It's just amazing how. 
it also is happening in the subsea. It's almost like <laughs> <laughs> they planned it. It's almost like they planned it, but it's what? almost like they didn't. I've been trying to come up with a cool acronym for the the streaming bearing maneuver that the NAV does. Which is wait, what? What has it? Like what? Tell me more. Sorry. Give us some words to work with. Yeah, no, basically. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, we want our word. How right. do we? Work? Is this, our, is this our new cryptogram? <laughs> when we when we do the move where we're lining vehicles up and we bear to an angle to try to to put them behind the ship, I'm trying to come up with a acronym that describes that so for our documentation. Streaming and bearing. I I was trying to do for launch stream and recovery oh. as the acronym, and it was like, what did I have? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Wait, can't okay, so um, what about like, uh, what about AVAP? Angular Vehicle Adjustment Protocol. Oh, I like that a lot. AVAP. How'd you do that? <laughs> I got talents. <laughs> yeah, I got skills here. <laughs> I've, I've made a few acronyms in my day. Oh, I like that. That was cool. AVAP. Well, I was thinking about like AHAB? strobe. I was like streaming to our bearing. I uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't start with a you can't start with a no, word. No, you can't start with a word. Fit. No, you got to go the other way. Raj, yeah. A backronym. Oh. Who else made that sound? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was enlightening, though. That that definitely happens a lot. Backronym. Megan, can we make it Ahab instead of Avap? What do we got there? Uh. Particular. Wait, wait a minute. No, we can't make it that way. What was it? What did you say? <laughs> she wants an Ahab and not a cat. A bab. Oh yeah, you gotta watch out for that one too. Yeah, there. no, not that one. <laughs> that one. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what I said. Yeah, what is that? No, there's a whole thing going there's, on. There's a very big thing going on, and that is definitely an acronym. <coughs> yeah, that's a good point, Gabby. It's got too much. It's very loaded. All right, we're going to scrap this acronym and start again. <laughs> Stream ahead, like S A. Okay, stream ahead, and or stream ahead, bear um, two bearing. No, two. Like, how do, how would you call it in? What would it sound like? All the other, all the other things I call in, it would be like, continue streaming at a speed bearing. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Raj. Bridge nap. So, how close are we to the point of twenty four meters? Raj. Wait, hold on. I might have. You want to phone that one in? Thirty nine meters. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> I, I dropped the target behind us. <laughs> She didn't even look up. <laughs> Let me enhance. <laughs> no, I... Cool. Somebody gave you guys a acronym. Oh, boy. W-T-T-A-D-B-W. What to talk about during blue water. <laughs> oh, man. We talk about a lot of things. <laughs> How do you say that, though? Really good Actually, water I talk. What a boo-boo. I kind of wanted to bring up today's <laughs> Wordle because we haven't rehashed it yet. <laughs> have we talked about Wordle yet today? We, I don't think we have. Wait, um, but can we just, while we're on the it's always back, Wordle. background, Are we Wordle watch? Can we make a background? No, <gasps> we're not. We don't. <laughs> I don't Not play. everybody here likes Wordle. No, we're the pool of the really just, I can go off SBL to talk about it with Nia then. No, well, I just have a question. <laughs> Is there any way we can come up with a back back? Backronym for umble 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 um, yeah, like, yeah. It's got a lot of letters. <laughs> it's got a lot of use. It's also really it's hard, hard to say. <laughs> it's only it's if you're pretty, me. Pretty fun to say. Umbalumba. 
All right. You can do it on SBL. You, well, I'm forced listening to you, so it doesn't work. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. The one of his stabs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to read it, Brandy? Wait, we have we have another acronym from. Uh, oh, this is a good one too. Okay, stab, streaming toward another bearing. They did it. They they figured the the world figured it out for us. Yeah. They're not even listening. They're wordling. <laughs> they're can, not wordling, they're the just wordle talking about wordle. freaks listen to oh, our yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> God, I don't know. We're, we're going to okay, talk we're wordle. We're we need to talk wordle. The, oh, the, the internet hard. solved the uh, streaming and bearing thing. Oh, internet, tell me. Stab. Stab. <laughs> <laughs> streaming toward Oof. another bearing. It's not stab a maneuver. But. I like stab maneuver a lot. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> Yes. I'm so glad we have the internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going right. to call that in. So good. Stab. We need to put that on the whiteboard or put it on a little post-it just to have on here that that is what that means. We'll start hearing oh, the it's gonna be all bridge. Can we stab to <laughs> You have to say initiating stab. It's yes. stab. By the way, Nia, have you done the world oh yet God. today? What's that? Uh, I did... The one we did after watch last night when it was like which a was picture today. of Austria. That was tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> that one. So I don't know which that one you're looks talking so about. easy. <laughs> Wait, you stay up after watch? Well, we didn't Sometimes. really have watch it last night. What have, What was last night? We no, you day. had watch. Oh, yeah. Right. That was, you did, but doesn't we that did feel not. Doesn't feel like it was eight million years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like time doesn't really exist on the ship. Time no, time is no. irrelevant, especially right. since there is no ice cream. <laughs> there is no time. There's no you way to mark time. No ice cream, cream for really some of us. That backs up our, our metabolic theory. Is that a theory. Theory. or is that... When oh, there's yeah. not ice cream, we Never don't mind. experience time because <laughs> we're not metabolizing the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I think we have killed our pilots. Things just get Gabby and then we lose Gabby. <laughs> Our pilots are off SPL, but if we you can hear like, oh, laughing like, oh, no, through the rest of our Gabby microphones. <laughs> oh I, boy. I am laughing at Gabby. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Colin is stab. <laughs> Initiate that stab. Stab maneuver time. <laughs> I mean, they keep coming in. Now we have Sabra streaming right. and beaming right away. Everybody is going to take a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> is Watchley putting us in timeout? <laughs> and we're going to and, and we're going to come back to your science questions soon. All right. We're changing our heading. <laughs> Zero six eight. How many uh, listeners do we have out there, Brandy? Let's see. <laughs> so far, we have one hundred three visitors online. Wow. Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this to the stabbing? <laughs> Gotta remember it's daylight US, elsewhere, huh? UK, Latin America, Germany, Argentina, Finland, Switzerland, yeah, the South Yacht America. Tub. Thank you all for tuning in to Nautilus Live 12 for Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you have someone that's from Lafayette. Oh, cool. They yeah, I go to school. Right now I'm in grad school at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> Do you have like a favorite Louisiana dish? Food? Um, my friend, she made a really good gumbo. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Spicy? Mild? 
was pretty mild. Yeah, good. Yeah. More people can eat it. I love gumbo. Mm -hmm. And I never really get mm -hmm. to eat it. They have like, I've seen like a gluten-free roux starter. Oh yeah, no, I just mean it takes a long time nobody's making them. gumbo in Paris. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Let me sense. tell you, you mean you're not going to find it there. <laughs> or it's going to be wrong or something. Have you had crawfish before? I Who tried me? it and I didn't like, I don't like seafood. Right. So I, didn't I mean, like I've it. never tried it, so I'm just living like vicariously it. through you. <laughs> you can just come visit me. Yeah, okay. Put on the schedule. <laughs> I'm free, I'm free between these tr trips. Go recuperate. All right, we are eight Here. meters off of our initial spot. Sweet. And then we can start doing our thing again. Okay, so we have 100 meters to descend. Shall we? Yes. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. I'm gonna head down. Raj, you can down. do it too. Going in down. The science leads would like to thank you all for being awesome. You're welcome. What's <laughs> the ROV descent I believe speed? that was yeah, for the background. That, I don't know if that was for, oh, whatever. <laughs> your, like, we're what just Uber drivers up here. <laughs> Do we know what the ROV descent speed is? Um, right now, the winch is paying out at 15, 16 meters a minute. And uh, Herc is going down at 22 meters a minute, so... I should speed up. There's <laughs> <laughs> a little disparity there. Yeah, exactly. We'll see how well that goes. It's fine. I can't, I can't go faster than... I shouldn't go faster than 30 on the you winch. You shouldn't go faster than 30 on the winch. Yeah, but there's no, like... Why are there's no hard stop to <laughs> <laughs> Why are you considering going faster than 30 on the way? See, I, I can't go by the um <clears throat> by those numbers. I have to watch the, oh, the yeah, actual Oh, yeah, absolutely. Drum. That's the only way. The PLC and Andy is not really good at reporting that stuff. Yeah. Our, our, our PC, RCP. Excuse me? That's what they're, they are now. They oh. When the, like all, all the new changed. ones. Yeah. That's confusing to me. Yeah. They've been LCI 90s my whole career. Forever, I yeah. Can't Ooh, no, this. Not, they used to be LCI 80s. Remember that? No. Yeah. There were no LCI 80s in my existence. Well, go check out the Endeavor. Oh, really? <laughs> you could open a museum with the things <laughs> they've got. <laughs> when was the Endeavor built? Uh, I don't know, in the 60s. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, the ships I worked on were from the 90s. Yeah, it's about to be retired. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> It right, had it, it had midlife yeah, in the what's, 90s. What's the new ship's name? New ship's name is the Narragansett Dawn. And I'll share with you that the captain of the Narragansett Dawn, the captain of the Endeavor that will be the captain of Narragansett Dawn, um, which is the regional class research vessel, DOS, um, that will be at University of Rhode Island. Well, he's very Italian. And so it's kind of like the Narragansett Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> is that how he calls it? <laughs> well, yeah, because he does. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Understood. Why? I I heard about it. That's complicated. Doesn't um, sound too bad. Pilots, would you yeah. like to hold station here while we come back down? Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Bridge, Nev. Could we hold position? Thank you. I gotta write down Sorry, we did that thing there. where each person is following the other person and you get nowhere. <laughs> I was like waiting for you to come down and you were waiting for me. That was really good. <laughs> Except when you don't talk about it and you just stand there. <laughs> Brandy, what was the T in stab? Say it again? The T in the STAB acronym? Uh, towards. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, streaming towards yep. another bearing. Mm -hmm. Cool, I'm writing it down. I am. <laughs> Thank you. Doing two kind things viewer. at once. Okay.
Slow down, girl. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there was a flying fish just in the um, cable cam. Ooh, Ooh, I missed it. It's pretty cool. Oh, um, the back deck can probably turn off the oh lights yeah. if they want. Rush. Or the bridge. Bridge, Nav. Oh, you are good to turn aft deck lights off now. Hey, video, do you <clears throat> have a sense of what might be going on with the 60 hertz cabinet again, uh, the camera on the 60 hertz? Oh. Watch lead, are we going back to the same spot roughly or are we traversing to a slightly different one? We are in the exact same spot. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, we got it. We are Ooh. back to the bottom. Excellent. Uh, Dana, did we happen to sea log any of this? Sorry, what was that? Did we do any sea logging during this uh, endeavor? Yes. Sweet. Thank you. Yes. I was not in a place to do that. You are all good. Uh, what's the bearing of our next move? Uh, the bearing of our next move, if we're going to go directly to waypoint 5, is going to be 004. Roger. OK, that's what. That's about what 004 looks like. There it is. There's that ocean floor. Are you ready to start cruising? Uh, <coughs> Kelly, are you ready? Okay, oh, yeah, let's do it. Sea pen. Bridge, now. Uh, could we step two zero meters bearing zero zero four? Thank you. We're on top of like a cool little knoll. Yeah, that's that's wild. It's like a little knife point ridge almost. Mm -hmm. Stab. <laughs> C pen. Ooh, Ooh, can we zoom on that? Yes. Very excited to look at something. Our first <laughs> zoom. It's in been a while. <laughs> I think you're allowed to zoom on holothurians again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Go for zoom. OK, go wide. 1204. Yeah. We were, we did the midwater um, for about an hour by uh, that clock. U UTC. No. No, yeah, UTC. 1204 UTC. I've got a lot of targets dropped if you want. What is that? Is that another one of our uh, anthropod friends? Arthropod? Go for Zoom. Little lobsters? No. No, it's oh, a whole oh, We love you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gabby. <laughs> I made you zoom I am on well a within my rights here now. <laughs> Her break is over. Yeah. And there might be oh. a little crab there as oh, well. Oh, cute. Such a cutie. See, worth it. Tiny. Basically the size of one laser dot. <laughs> I've never had anyone ask me how big the laser dots were. <laughs> how big are the laser oh, dots? Oh, that's a good that question, That depends though. entirely on... The zoom? 
on um, how far away they are. Makes uh, sense. Like in theory, a laser uh, dot would be like the same size no matter how far away it is, but that's not, like in actuality, it doesn't really work like that. They spread a little. Is that a coral <coughs> on a small rock there? A uh, coral on small rock. Like yes, towards yes, the there's yeah. a whip there. Oh, yes, Ooh. there is. Mia, can we also zoom out on high pack and see how far we are from our next waypoint? Roger, uh, we are 391 meters away. And it is right here. Okay. We'll just keep cruising up this very steep slope and we'll end up cresting out into our waypoint. Sounds good. <clears throat> Do you think that we could um, cruise up a little bit closer to the rocks that we're seeing off to the, the port side? Yeah, absolutely. So we could kind of look at them as we go up? Totally. Maybe find a loose one. I had this like <laughs> little kid sort of like being drawn to the highest point thing. Mm. Like I just wanted to like, like if I was down here, I would want to be cruising along on the top of the thing. Yeah. But there's a loose rock. Oh, is there? <laughs> okay. There is a loose rock. That does open up a lot of possibilities for us. Are you I interested love that in rock that? Yes, us. yes. Excellent. Are you thinking rock sample? Yes. Okay. And is that a Chrysogorgia right there? Looks uh, like I it. think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a little stretched out, but we'll get there soon. Three or four of those. Let me know when you want to hold position. Yeah, you can keep going. <laughs> Raj. Uh, actually, I'm going to let you know that I want to hold position right now. Right now? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bridge now. Because uh, we've got a good, we've got a bit of layback right now. Could we hold position? Thank you. Ooh, and there's a little sponge as well. <coughs> nice. I really like these. Oh, and what is that that's moving? Where? Is that another crab? Oh, yeah, I see With it. the giant... <gasps> With a really big portable house. <laughs> the bugles yeah, the type bu of the bugle shell? shells. <laughs> he blends in very well. Or she, or they. Uh -oh. Ooh. oh, cleaning off our rock, I see. Yeah, <laughs> just checking to see if it's attached or not. Nice bright yellow crinoid. So those la uh, lasers are 10 centimeters apart. Do they ever change the distance between the lasers or can it change? Um, we can't hear you, Gabby. <laughs> Sorry about that. In theory, you can, they're two separate lasers. So in theory, you could mount them any distance apart you wanted. We happen to have them mounted on a bracket that keeps them not only 10 centimeters apart, like right at the body of the laser, but very um, like rigidly controls the way they point so that they're 10 centimeters apart, like no matter how far away you get from them mm -hmm. in theory. Um, so that's just, that's what we use. And I think that's pretty common to use 10 centimeters. Uh, but yeah, if we had a different set of brackets, we could mount them a different distance apart because they're just two separate pen lasers basically mounted in pressure housings. Okay. Oh, is that the loose rock that you were talking about there next I to the yellow? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Rich. Um, Kylie, you want to poke at a rock?
Roger, if that's <coughs> if that's what you need to do. Um, but we do want to try to change heading as little as possible. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a log. He said it set. was getting the bath restaurant was getting up to forty percent. Yeah. Okay. I think forty or fifty. Is that? I I honestly don't know what the like the limitations the of that are. Yeah. Like whether that's that's the thing. Like I just I would have to leave up to him. It's working, but I don't think it's like overworking. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I also don't. I am in the same boat. I don't drive it all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's yes. a little, little crevice thing. Let's see if that's attached or not. I'll leave uh, you. I can set down for this one. There's a pretty decent spot, I think. I'm ready. Okay. Coming up on craft out. Thank you. Oh, that's not a sorry. sorry. Oh, is it it's attached? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry it was a that. nice try, though. Thank yeah. you. Are sea pins a totally different species from corals? No, they are a type of octocoral. They just have a... Ready for um, me to turn it off? Yeah modified like a hold fast called a peduncle that will allow them to anchor into the sediment. Mm -hmm. So they are an octocoral. Okay. Um, Naturally CA. Peduncle. The last the Latin name. I love that word. I know. Peduncle. But I me too. It's so fun. <laughs> peduncle. Wow, look at the Argus view. Oh, I like that. Oh, that is beautiful. And look at those lines going down it of where something Ooh. has gone down. If you're tuning in from Nautilus Live and would like to see Argus's view, please check out satellite feed two when looking at the quad screen. Is what is that? An enemy. Can oh, we get, can, we, can we, we get a zoom on? Oh, it, it looks, looks like, like a flytrap like an enemy. Yeah, mm -hmm. on top of a Chrysogorgia maybe? Go for zoom. What type of coral is this? Wow. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Yellow light. Ooh. That's very oh. nice. Not for the Chrysogorgia. <laughs> <laughs> and that botryoidal texture on the rocks. Do you have what you need, Data? Yes. Thank okay. you. Go wide. I love that they match in color too. Yeah. Just aesthetically pleasing. It's like accessories. Mm -hmm. I think that they would all make like really cool lamps. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh. Are we ready to cruise forward? We're not going to take a sample? Yeah. All right. Bridge, now.
could we step to zero meters bearing zero zero four thank you zero zero four Oh my gosh. Okay, you can push past the porch there. Thank you, video. Ooh, is that a whip? <laughs> Go for Zoom. Sure looks like it. Which no sparse branches. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Although, is it a bamboo? I don't see any notes. Yeah, they can be difficult to see sometimes. That could be one. Where? Hmm. Or maybe not. I think I see one. It's kind of hard from this angle, especially. Another Chrysogorgia. You want to zoom on the uh, Chrysogorgia? Yeah, let's okay. do it. In reality, I should be getting the um, the 60 hertz data from Grafana now, and I just can't quite get used to it. Go for zoom. I want to. And there's an urchin oh, next to it. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. There it is. And another little one. Go wide. Maybe I should take this up as a learning opportunity to look at the look at Grafana for voltage and current stuff. I think that's another oh, crazy gorgeous. Is that another? Oh, oh wow. yeah, that's a big one. Go for zoom. Nice. I would say so. I yeah, that would be think. my guess. Yeah. I don't know how predatory portal stars are, but like sea stars can be. Um, yeah. That's not to say brittle stars can't be. I just don't know. <laughs> so are sea uh, brittle stars mostly up there just for the perch? I think so. It seems like that to me, or from my understanding. There's a little shrimp hiding under the ledge. <laughs> okay, go wide. 
Are you interested Could in those rocks? we potentially take a look at the rocks up here? Yeah. As long as we don't uh, interrupt that coral. That looks like they're attached. Don't burst my bubble so soon. At first I was really thinking they weren't, but when we turn and we have a different angle, you can see kind of. But the one on top, maybe not? Oh, Maybe awesome. not. Thank you. Maybe not. I can be oh, oh, yeah. optimistic. Totally, oh, that's possible. super neat. These look like little crumbs. Uh, where are you looking, Megan? Uh, here. Okay. Let's go look at some crumbs. It's crumb you want to get the... Uh, They're also a little smaller. Crumb unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get the poking stick ready? Yes. The poking stick. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Raj and can we poke that rock? Or some of the most common things we say. Snip and slurp. <laughs> you ready for you ready for action? We ready need to get action. some t-shirts okay. with action that. Jackson. Jackson. Okay, Falvon. Amber, do you mind taking a moment? Probably to gonna a little to bit our stuff our the arm into the, the side of the of the mountain. So uh, if you we can get it out in front just first. a second. We're going to try to actually pick up a rock in just a minute. So I wanna look mm -hmm. and uh, watch as they do it. But after that I'll be nice. fine to do that. Oh, those look very different from this angle. Oh. I actually can't tell which one I was looking at now. This but one. now... This one, right? Probably. This one? Yeah. Wow. Now I really wish I we could get I that. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. But <laughs> that might be difficult. Yeah, I don't think the arm could do that. Can you point me towards the arm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Could you circle again for me? This one? Yes. Or this one? <laughs> <laughs> Still hopeful. <laughs> Holding out on the dream. Uh, oh, oh my God! It lived. Wow. Really, I really, I promise I was not expecting it to budge. <laughs> I was not either. I don't think any of us were. No. Do we have a place to put this? Yes, we do. Starboard Sea. Roger. Nice. What do you think? What do you feel? That's <laughs> going to show some good alteration. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, can we get a zoom on it? Slightly out of the little dust cloud? Yes. You want me to get the dust off it first? Sure. That'd yes. be great. You could do a spin. <laughs> it's doing a pirouette. Stretching <laughs> out our wrist. <laughs> This cloud's coming towards the camera. I'll just give it a second. We can also pick up, if we fly with it, it'll get very clean. Yeah, you wanna do that? Yeah, that works. Okay, uh, can you go wide video? Okay, I'm gonna pick up just with uh, the arm as it is. Okay. So what do you think, Amber? Are you going to get some I mean, good dating on, on probably this Probably not good dating, but it'll be good to see what's over here That's once we break it open. True. So I am good for keeping it.
What, which bio box did you guys say? Starboard C. Starboard C, Roger. Look at the streaks in the sediment in, mm -hmm. you can see them in Argus's view quite well too. Do the bio boxes immediately fill up with water during the launch or do they fill up when they are first open? They fill up very soon, so they have to. We actually designed them to. Um, when we launch, we keep them a little bit open. If they did not fill up, uh, they're not designed to be pressure tolerant. So as soon as the pressure of the water um, pressed down on them, if they were filled with air, they would collapse. Mm. Um, so we put them in and have them fill up immediately. Got it. Okay, I'm on halting. interesting how arms work i know <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> nice wrist pitch, wrist when you have wrist pitch figured out yeah. with your yaw in yeah. it's like the coolest thing ever like i guess i can always oh gosh <laughs> just elbow down okay video zoom That has been eaten. Yeah, wow. Oh, that's going to just crumble uh, yeah. apart. Sorry, I want to show you the other side of it, but it <laughs> has a crust. Yeah? Are you good? A little crusty. Okay, come wide. Yeah, you're right. Someday, someday I'll get it. Does not look it, it like I never get an opportunity to just like move it with all the range of motion and like see what it does when I do that. So yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I'll just take it while I have the chance. Yeah. You can't <laughs> run it on deck this wildly. Yeah, totally. Okay. Kylie, Kylie, is it yes, like dear. playing a computer game when you pick up the rocks? Nope. Oh. She says no. I do not, I have nothing, nothing that I've ever done before is similar to this. <laughs> like the arm manipulation. I don't think that, I don't, I can't, compare it to anything. No. Saved it. <sighs> oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Come here. Uh, I think. Okay. Did we just put something in B? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. We want C. Okay. I know, I'm sorry. And A oh, was already good. full. A was full. Okay. Nice. I'm sorry if I um, mixed up some of your samples with the dust. It's okay. We'll, be we'll fine. figure it out. I think both of those boxes are probably rocks. So yes. So we're all good. All right. Brandy, what was that question again about formation of the rocks? Nice job. Thanks for the rock. No mm. problem. Ready for dive? Yeah. Is it that one uh, from Paris? Are we ready to press on? From Paris. Uh, just a second. Okay. Thanks. They say hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I think it's Lou. Hi, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I'm wondering how the rock formations we're looking at accumulate their shapes. In other words, how are they formed? Thanks to all on the watch team for the soothing and informative content. Yay. Ah. Okay, I'm halted. It's kind of okay. twofold there. 
Do you want to take it? <laughs> well, aren't we not completely sure? So you actually don't even need to, now that I think about it, bring yeah. the elbow all the way down. That'll I was going to go for it in a general sense. I mean, oh, but sure. right here, here I'm not quite sure on yet. It is yeah, uh, shoulder elevation. Too. Okay, so shoulder all the way up and then elbow and just then like... And then everything, and the azimuth in the correct second. position and everything else just really? turn it off. Really? Yeah, it's really nice. you just nice. trust that it'll like... It self-stows. Oh, that's it's wild. It's delightful. Okay. Okay. Um, and I know that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, are we liking 20 meters or do we want to press forward a little bit faster? Oh, true. 20 is good. Yeah. All right. Wasn't so. All right. Bridge now. For how these rocks form. Oh, we've got another of those uh, arthropods. Little lobsters. Um, Could so, we well, why don't you meters, start with the, zero, the zero, broader four. geology of the area, maybe? All right, yeah. That's something we can answer with, <laughs> with, with more conviction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, these seamounts are volcanic in origin. So we're seeing uh, different uh, morphologies of lava flows. And then as time passed, you know, we've got all this sediment accumulating on them. You have a ferromanganese crust growing on top of them. So that's kind of creating that sort of black view of them. And if any time when we're zooming in on the rocks, you see this sort of grape-like texture like botryoidal texture of the crust. That's what creates that. And then there was this really, really nice sheer cliff face uh, that we had at the beginning of this watch and around the end of the last watch that I'm thinking might be shale. And so that would be uh, sedimentary rock, so formed after the initial um, seamount formed due to accumulation of sediments on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, where we are right now, I'm not quite sure what sort of uh, formation we're in. So I hope that answer is a little bit at least of the general part of your question. There was a few moments earlier where I thought maybe we were seeing some pillow tubes in, yeah, there in Argus view in particular so that would be volcanic rocks but then as we looked more closely and as we moved up slope it started to not look like that anymore but we've and been moving on an incline of uh, 45, like a 45 degree angle which is really steep and there's so much sediment and yeah there's a the lot sediment of sediment is obscuring a lot of features here and on top of that we have such a thick ferromanganese crust that everything looks dark and covered in this botryoidal grape-like texture. So no matter what the rock below once looked like or what it looks like now after having weathered for a long time, yes, everything is kind of covered in this crust, so it's kind of hard to tell. One of the think, rocks we picked up. I think we got an Umbalula up here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Maybe. Can, Can we, we get a zoom, zoom on on the unbelievable creature. <laughs> Not to interrupt the geology talk. <laughs> oh. Wait, what I just know that? how we enjoy an umbalula. What's that behind it? Is that a I don't sponge know. or a crinoid? All right, I got completely distracted by the, like, sp I don't know, stalked something behind it, and no I don't worries. know what happened, but here we are. Umbalula, focusing. Umbalula. We have a question for pilots. Yes. They would like to know which one is more Focusing. difficult, sampling for biology or geology. Is on this trip, it's harder to find geology to sample. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It depends I on where things are, right? I think one of the more difficult things to do is actually to sample for the chemists. Um, like the hydrate the, sample, the, the hydrate samples, yeah. the gas tight samples. Yeah, those are hard. When you actually have to operate something that somebody made. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> 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 somebody that wasn't an ROV pilot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the um, 
Cascadia margin cruise, we did the, these hydrate samples. I think I mentioned it. So Beautiful, you, you, Ryan. You, that was you awesome. Hold it with um, the Magnum up against a rock um, and then use the craft to basically grab the handle of it and twist it so that it would like do the wrist rotate so that it would like drill into it without letting the tip of where you're drilling slip in the magnum hand off of the rock, which is off, off of the hydrate, which was slick and slippery. Can we, as we're moving up this, can we look at the rock? Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. So that was pretty hard. Challenging, but it's it feels good when you get it. Yeah, that always looks very tricky. All the different that a traptions. Blue coral right in front. Oh yeah, yeah right. Uh, uh, whip looks like it. Go for zoom. And the little little octocoral that found a maybe a, a, a oh. right oh. noid whip instead. And looks like there's also an anthemasis there. Wow. Okay, go ahead. It's like a very dramatic like lip in the rock right behind Hercules too. Oh yeah, yeah I see that. It's there, so we have to go look at it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Yes. Watch I was wondering what was happening. What watch are we looking at? <laughs> What's that? I said, just watch your back. What's behind me that you see? Uh, a, a rock. Uh, right? Like that's your. I'm no, that's the rock that's ahead of me. Oh, Roger. Well, it looks like it looks like there's the same on both sides. Sorry, do you know, I just see it differently. I guess. Um, I so think it's lower on the on the. The yeah, yeah. Side. yeah. I, I was gonna go by, back and like drop down. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you can. S so. Yeah. Well, it's it's t in front of me, but it's also to the side. The thing that's to the to my right side is a sloping hill. The thing that's in front of me is a hard rock, and then the thing that's directly behind me is space. Yeah. Yeah, the light, like the lights and the everything can, yes, agreed, agreed. It would be pretty amazing to see a little rock tumble down this hill. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm following hill. that track to see if we do see the end. Here's the next level of the terrace. Nice. And Herc is in full flashlight mode. Cool. <laughs> Looking Argus. It's amazing. That is amazing. Ooh, and another Ooh. whip. Whip coral. And a tiny Iridogorgia up at the top. Wow. What's this like feather dustery thing right next to the whip? Uh, uh I think feather the crinoid. Star? Oh, okay. Go for zoom. can push in a little further. There you go. Nice. Okay, go wide. Thank you.
Yeah, it's pretty wild. Holothorian. Oh, let's get a zoom on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why they bother to be purple. Because it's beautiful. I because guess they so want to be zoomed on. <laughs> Go they zoom. Want, they want us. It's interesting that so many critters at this depth are like translucent, and this one is just like so vibrant. Yeah. I know. I love it. Okay, go ahead. Oh my gosh, oh, it that's really amazing. Is. Does it come up here? Okay. Okay, let's do a test. It's quite a little overhang. Huh, try capturing. Oh, but if you capture Ooh, there, it's fine. Ooh, corals. Different corals. Okay, let me check. Oh, we haven't seen any Can of these yet. Can we zoom on watch. these? Yeah, this looks like a plexorid and a different type of chrysogorgid, maybe. Go for oh, zoom. Oh, no. Okay. Or no, that's definitely not a plexorid. I just saw yellow. That looks like a yeah. probably a zoanthid. Mm. They're bigger than usual. Yes. And there's a brit. No, not a brittle star. That's a squat lobster. We're just sort of in this dark spot here in the, in the vehicle's lights. Want more light. <laughs> wow. That's All better. the little grapes. But the botryoidal texture is very vibrant. So, so many grapes. Oh. Oh. That's a bamboo coral. Oh, is that a sparse brancher? Um, Not quite. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe, yeah. There's do a few you, branches. Do you yeah. want? Can we get a zoom on that? Yeah, can we get a zoom? Yeah. This is a beautiful cliff. It really is. And a Chrysogorgia underneath. Um, yep. Okay, uh, go for zoom. Would it be possible to go back down and zoom in where the branching is occurring? Yes. Huh. Is that kind of the view you want? It seems like they're a little bit obscured still. I'll try and do yeah. a little better. Oh, yeah. Do that. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can zoom. Science, if you put the 4K up someplace where you can look. Uh, they are in the middle of doing a watch change. Okay. Okay, well, maybe that's time for the next. Yeah, could. Kind of. Um, I think if we stay around here, Video maybe collect it. it on the next watch then. Have. Um, Ryan, do you want to put 4K possible. up in the upper and If not, one? video was great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, I'll get you right back in there. Thank you, Ryan. All right. This is Brandy Jones signing off. Thank you all for joining 12 to 4. Passing it over to Dr. Figueroa. Yeah, can we... There it is. Hmm. Interesting.
Mary, did you see what you needed there? Yes, thank okay. you. Awesome. Thanks, Kylie. So I think we're gonna, I've, I feel like I overheard that we're gonna sample this, so I'm not gonna go too far. I, uh, I think I asked Steve to attempt a sample, if okay. possible, for this next watch. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, front row, we're going to sample this bamboo. Right here. Let me uh, see if I can perch here. I think they already imaged it um, previously, so we could just go in for the grab, you know, 10, 15 centimeters or so from off the top. See where I'm hurt, so okay. Let 
looks good. Yep, take it, take it. Thank you. Afraid we're gonna come off it. This a snip and slurp, is it, Steve? Yeah, I think it'll fit. Video, can you put uh, 4K in front of me? Yeah, it's just going to take me a little bit. More button pushes. Oh dear, sorry. No problem. Can we put it into Slurp Container 3? Slurp Container 3, you're at it. I got it. We didn't flush, Steve. Do you want to? No, don't worry about the flush. Just right. yeah, go through. I think the last thing was a cup coral, and I saw it intact, I think. Okay. Sample Vacuum number zero. 7 0. Let's see. Yeah, that ought to go. Yeah. Yeah, cup coral. Okay. Maybe in a little more. Half of it. <laughs> I don't have a four K button, do I, Tammy? No, and for some reason my menu is locked, so let me just do it on hers. Everybody uh, scratch your armpit with your right arm and you'll know what Antonella is trying to do. I see that Kraft and I are no longer friends. <laughs> we had a good day yesterday and now it's going to be like this. Do you want to throw it in the box? I don't want to make her suffer. Okay. Get in the end. <laughs> it's a difficult one to get to. Okay, I think I'm on it. I maybe. Think you're there. Yeah. Hold it. Ready? Yeah. Uh, my jaws are on the. Yeah, it's going. It went okay. nicely done. Great. Awesome display of persistence. <sighs> Rebecca, that was 75? Yep, 75. Thanks. All right. yep. Got two pieces in the jar. Looks good. Totally. I mean, the jar to somewhere else for our next victim. You mean sample, right? I zoom there, Tammy. down the curly queue. Nice. Ritagorgia. Great way to start the morning. Yeah. Can't land because... Uh, Alright. It's like two meters tall, the thing. Why is my azimuth locked? I don't know. <sighs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sometimes if it, it gets in that menu, you like accidentally hit yeah. stuff with your left arm. I do it yep. all the time. Like, why is it not working? Why is it not working? <laughs> oh, sorry. I pushed the wrong button. 
<laughs> so uh, I guess we were moving north-ish, something like something like that. Yeah, um, our next waypoint is due north. Roger. Steve, any uh, reason to alter that plan? Roger. Bridge now. Can you put uh, DSC up in the... Yeah. When you get Two zero meters bearing north. Yes. Can I stir the craft first? Uh, yeah, yes. Because I'll lose eyes on Argus. Stow it. Okay. Close enough. Yeah. Now that I have all the joints. Mm. Okay. I'm surprised you were able to function it with only... Me too. Six of them. <laughs> Um, Tammy, can you put the Argus camera on the regular spot, please? Uh, I don't know what you mean by monitor that. Monitor one. Oh, okay. Um, the 4K is up on, yeah, is that monitor one? Yeah. Okay, I don't know what it's no, called. Oliver. Okay, thank you. We need a secret button for our layout, Tammy. Yeah. Secret, secret, super secret, unofficial. The Delta Probably Dan button. <laughs> yeah, the Dan button probably going to change, so totally going to change for the next cruise. Well, then we just have it, and then every cruise you get to change it to the yeah. custom layout. Yeah. You usually have a Dan button, but you usually hide it. Uh, let's see, i got to get, uh, what am I doing here? I don't want bucket cam, I want starboard, don't hit anything cam. Oh yeah, what you got there in your uh, 4K camera? Yeah, bringing it down into Zeus. The 4K discovery coming in <laughs> through HD. <laughs> secret, secret camera <laughs> hides all the things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so novel to look down at your feet <laughs> while you're walking across the rocks. <laughs> Such a way with Tell words. Me, you, can, uh, <laughs> you can zoom in there if you want. I actually don't know what that is, so this is actually a really interesting uh, coral here. Okay. Uh, wow. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, when the camera does that. Hmm. I think we finally stumped Steve. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is a stumper. Took for two sure. Weeks. <laughs> so I mean my initial suspicion was that it was a, a stolonifer and, you know, something overgrowing a, another something or other. Um, but it looks like there's enough polyp density here that it might actually be something growing on its own skeleton. Um, can you touch it or poke it? Yeah. With, with the potential to uh, sample soon afterwards if... Uh, Snip it? Yeah. Yeah. And the ship's about to complete a move, so we'll be good. Roger. I would say thrust or wash it, but uh, oftentimes uh, that might not be enough. These are pretty pretty uh, soft. It's probably a stolen ifrin, but I just want to be sure that's just enough. Uh, Uncertainty. Launching the poke of science. <laughs> just a, just a gentle <laughs> caress. Okay. The caress of science. Caress of science, yeah. Not, not so... You might have to go full wide so she can uh, get her orientation there. Yeah, there you thanks. go. We can chase her in a little if she's happy with that. Uh, yeah, you can go back in a little. Actually. 
it's oh, kind of for a, far. Oh, oh, for a 4K tilt. Yeah, I can, uh, I can come back closer. Right, I can. Nice and so. slow moves. No jerks. Does, do you have any data on when the last, uh, the depth of the last sample there, 71? Let's see. Let me write it down. That's better. Uh, 2,266 yeah. meters. Um, can you come wide again, please, Tammy? Okay. Like that's Thanks. why. Okay. Zoomy, zoomy, zoom. Sorry, I don't know who to listen to. Uh, just show yeah. her that. That's good right there. Okay. She's got a five function manipulator at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Sorry. Fine. I uh, pulled on the winch and it, look what happened. <laughs> I see that. I got a little worried about. You want to set the ship back? Uh, no. Okay. It should stop above us there. I just wanted to pick it up a little bit. Yeah, tether was. You should have left it. You should have suffered. Uh, Nav, can you well, zoom out pour your, uh, pour your to arm get the remaining waypoints in line? Sure. How many waypoints would you like? Um, that's plenty right there. Okay. What's our distance to waypoint five right now? Uh, to waypoint five. Oh, you're right there. Actually, let me select the waypoint. I want to see it zoomed in. Okay. I just want to get close while I'm oriented. 330 okay. meters. Okay, great. Tammy, you can go ahead and zoom in. By caressing this coral, what are we looking for, Steve? I'm looking for how the polyps are going to retract. Yeah, that's good. And then if we can zoom in again, yep. I can look and see if there are some specific characters about how the polyp interacts with the skeleton that will tell me if it's in one family or another. Um, to get a perch again here. Pull your arm out a little bit, please. Or pull it in towards the vehicle. Okay, Tammy, you might be able to get a zoom there. Yeah, so th this is uh, more likely than not it's a stolonifrin, so it's probably on a sponge stalk. Um, the polyps aren't retracting in a way that is kind of uh, all that expected into the skeleton. Into the skeleton. So, um, well, since you got the arm out, can you think you could take a small snip of it anyway? Yeah. yeah. Stolonifrins are pretty poorly known. Um, you know, we did take a snip of one uh, earlier, probably a different species from that sponge that we got last night on the wall of wonder uh, with all those bamboo corals and stuff. Yeah. I'm going to have to change my target name to Wall of Kay. Wonder. Yes. Go, go That's wine. our second album. <laughs> or is it a wonder <laughs> wall? Steve's done that. That already exists. It's an <laughs> oasis song. You see a manipulator? Hopefully. Yeah, now you see a manipulator. Yep. <laughs> but you gave me an idea for a rewrite. <laughs> Now we've got to go with that right Oasis song. Right. Might be a little high for it. Oh, yeah, you can do oh. it. If you can get half of it, at least, that would be plenty. Okay. Left just a touch. Okay. Perfect. Push in just a bit. Let a snip, enough. Tammy. That's good. Oh, why am I? Hang on. Why am I? Sorry. Can you come wide again? Something's. 
this one just really far away. So, if you, uh, You can um, zoom in again, please, Timmy. It's possible your contact on the bumper bar. Yeah, I think so, because I'm... That's a snip there. Nice. Perfect. Can't see if I'm... Oh, good, it snapped. Okay. Uh, slurping. Where yes. do you want it, Steve? Uh, yeah, jar four, whatever you got queued up. Yeah, we got four queued up. Don't have to go wide, I think, Tammy, to be able to see. I am oh, wide. Oh, you are? You are, sorry. So, Steve, where did you land with ID on this? Unidentified Octa Corellia. Oh, mystery. Unidentified. Nice. Right. Open, open, open. I halted. My suspicion is this is a stolen effort, nice. but there's some uh, debate in the chat, and I think that the reasonable assumptions um, about what it could be. So, whenever there's the most interesting samples, are always the ones that we have multiple Some opinions discussion and about. discussions <laughs> about, yeah. Um, well, while you have the arm out, can you take a Niskin sample here too? Yeah. Yeah, we might have to do, uh, might have to put the hose in and out. I haven't seen it in the jar yet. Okay. Yeah, the jar is not quite lined up. Well, good morning, world, and welcome. You've got a new watch, Delta Dan and the Arachnophobe Band. Excited to be with you and share. The chat is live, so go ahead and send in your questions and comments. Um, we'll be monitoring and happy to have you join us for this exploration. Yeah, give the host a... Uh, give the host a... We're, con yep. We're continuing to explore the western ridge of this unnamed seamount. Um, we've been going along a 3.5 kilometer transect upslope. Our deepest depth, 2,800 meters, and we're moving toward the summit, which is at approximately 1,500 meters. Our goals here are to collect Come volcanic on, rock. Grab the nozzle too if you want. Yeah. It's easier. Well, I could get the puck. Almost. It's going to help us understand the geological history of this area. Um, additionally, we're looking for iron manganese rich crusts from this site to help us um, well, that should be good. better understand the geochemistry you know, of this area. This is Steve's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is, yeah. Especially yeah. with the mystery sample. Mystery sample. That's oh, probably far enough. Currently, we just took a little sample of an unidentified octocoral. It's causing some discussion camera. amongst the community Thanks. using the Stand. snip and slurp technique. I keep going in and out with the hose. And now the shake. Snip, slurp, and shake. Nice. There's another song there, Samantha. <laughs> Oops. Okay, hold on there. Okay. Turn it off and then back on again. 
I don't see water dancing around in there. So. Yeah, it, it looks pretty stagnant. Well, it's crystal clear. So I could suck up some sediment just to see what's uh, what's getting in there. Yeah, I don't. Let me do a jar rotate there. Did we? Uh, I wonder if we straighten that camera in one there. On the glass that was on the list. I don't. Is that both bits of the other coral? Yeah, they're right there. Okay. That's uh, that's the last one, I think. Yeah. 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 Oh, they got a they got a soft coral. That was neat. I just might be a little too high. I don't think so. Maybe stick it up on the wall too. It'll. Plenty of sediment on that wall. You can shove it against the wall if you want. Either way. Mm. Lots of questions coming in about okay. the slurp. It's, I don't want to go any further than that. While we're working on this, Rotate your wrist. Steve, do you know how many slurp containers we have on board and how many slurp samples we have the ability to collect? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's eight that's jars good. in total, um, but one is reserved for our, what's oh. called a flush to uh, kind of decontaminate one sample from another so we don't slurp one sample into another bucket accidentally. Okay. Bring it back up. And uh, but I like to think of the flush as just extra sample space. Try and get it lined up and do a rapid out and in. You'll have to go in first, obviously. Alice Cooper song playing in the background. Welcome to my jar nightmare. <laughs> Tilting down on Argus. Okay, thanks. Did it end up on? in three? Doesn't it look like there's something else now in three? No, something that was else? a previous sample. Wasn't it a smaller sample than that, though? There were two pieces, two pieces that went in. It broke, yeah, the, the last sample broke in pieces. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, it, the polyps and everything look larger now, but I don't know if it's the camera. Well, I would say uh, give it another minute, and sometimes things thing, these things just fall in the box uh, yeah, over time. So we do want to keep moving. Okay. Right there. I don't see it anywhere in the hose that we can where we can see. It. So it's probably oh, silly camera. It's probably in the loop. Somewhere. Yeah, it's all right. It's not the first time we've gotten our sample from the from the hose. hose. Yeah, hmm. use the the jest technique. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great technique. Yeah, I'll turn off the porch light. Huh. Okay, we can uh, mosey. Okay, Roger. Can I do a quick TVL reset? Sure. Bridge now. Two zero meters bearing north. Okay. 
Okay, as we begin this next move, why don't we do some introductions for our watch today? Um, I'm Dejana Figueroa, serving as Science Communication Fellow of Communications. I'm going to be checking in with the chat, looking at your comments, questions, and whatnot. And a part of this watch joining you for our exploration of the seamount. You forgot the fun, your fun fact. Okay. <laughs> I think another I used my fact? best one last time. <laughs> how about something, how about another question? Another mm -hmm. fun, fun uh, something about you. Uh-oh. How about my favorite place to visit in the world? I'll have to tilt back up. And my current favorite place to visit in the world would be New Orleans, Louisiana. I love that town. I love the food, the people, the culture, the vibe. Fun times there. Mm. Yes. Uh, my name is Jordan Akiyama. I'm a public affairs specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, favorite place to visit? My bed. No, um, <laughs> I really enjoy Hokkaido, Japan. I've had the opportunity to go there. It's, it's, Japan, but it's not. It's very different than the rest of the main, you know, the main island. So, yeah, kind of pretty cool. All right. My name is Steve Oskovich. I am the watch lead for the 4 to 8, as well as the lead scientist for this expedition out to the Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll region. Um, I am postdoc at Boston University where I study deep water coral, biodiversity, and biogeography. And uh, let's see, I, I really don't have a one particular place, but I would say any place near or adjacent to the ocean is uh, it's a happy place, very soothing. So you can imagine being out here is actually kind of nice, I'm surrounded by nothing except water. I'm and Rebecca. birds. Ooh. And birds. <laughs> Too many birds. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there. Um, I'm Rebecca Lippett. I'm Ooh, sitting in the close. data logger seat um, for this 4 to 8 watch. I am a second year PhD student at the University of Rhode Island. Um, I study marine geology, specifically submarine volcanoes. And my favorite place to visit is New Zealand. That's what I was going to say for the ferns. Uh, mm -hmm. And the giant squid. <laughs> they have it all. Why don't you go next, Samantha? Oh, I gotta think of a new place now. Um, <laughs> Samantha Wishnack, navigator, uh, also the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. Uh, I was going to say New Zealand for the ferns and the giant squid, uh, and the people. I will instead say, actually, closer to home, I was thinking about, uh, I've been thinking about as we're seeing some of these features, um, Lassen Volcanic National Park, which is in Northern Ooh. California, and has a lot of interesting, um, it's basically, the park itself is uh, in the middle of a super volcano that exploded many, 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 many years ago. Um, so the peaks of the park form the boundaries of the super volcano, and then in the middle are geothermal features um, that were basically the, the guts. So as we've been seeing these different sedimentary features, I'm, I'm thinking about some of the formations I've seen there, um, as well as some of the volcanic formations. Is there any way, um, before we continue to the next one, is there any way we could uh, pick up the pace as we move up towards the wall here? What do you got uh, yeah. available for ship moves and stuff? Yeah, we could do some uh, longer moves and just keep on trucking. Sounds, Sounds good. good to me. We're at 0 0.2 knots. Can we increase to 0 0.3? I'm fine with that. Yeah, we do have a bit of way to make up. Yeah. You good at that, Dan? Sure. Okay. Bridge, 
stretch it. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit more. Okay. Five zero meters bearing north, uh, with an increase in speed to zero point three, please. So buckle up. <laughs> I'm not going to stop unless you ask for it, then, Steve. Yeah. Got it. We're transect, cruising now. Transect mode. Yeah. Like that little sea urchin the other day. <laughs> I think we might be going faster than 100 <laughs> centimeters a minute, but yeah. I'll slow down a bit here, just uh, stretching out our leash there to, you know, get those beautiful Argus shots, but I, I need a little more, uh, a little more in the bank there. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, the zoom bank. <laughs> yeah, zoom bank. Bathy pathies, black coral. I'm, I'm just going to shout out stuff that I see so we can annotate it. But As we, like, fly yeah, by? As we fly by. Okay. I, whenever I'm annotating deep sea video, I typically have it on uh, either one and a half or two times speed, so it looks like we're going super fast. That's how I listen to my audio books yeah. and YouTube videos. Weird. As much as I like to recreate the full experience of being at sea, I don't want to have to sit through all that yeah. <laughs> painful mud should conversation. For, uh, <laughs> in this mode, we should be good for par. Yeah. OK. Steve, altitude. do you listen to the conversation yeah. too, or on mute? Okay, so it depends on which ship and uh, yeah, I'm annotating uh, video for, fine. or it, it also might depend on what's being observed. Fire if there, five, there's like usually that. some pretty good context. Um, you know, for so example, if the ship scientists up. on the ship are reading off what scientists ashore might be saying. That's good context about what an animal might be. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the kinds of clues that I listen in for. But otherwise, uh, you know, the banter is not really important to me when I'm annotating. But it is important to our viewers, so. That is right. <laughs> we like that you're with us for it's sure. It's a type of data all, all to itself. <laughs> oh, man. Human data. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going down to the pilots, do you guys have a favorite place in the world? Quick introduction. Hi, good morning. I'm Delta Dan in the Herc chair. Um, my favorite place to visit is home. Aww. Piece of dirt in the <laughs> That's a Cascade foothills. Lots of pine trees, a couple of ponds, lots of dogs. And lots of dogs? Other assorted animals, but uh, yeah, I miss my dogs and my kids. <laughs> <laughs> that order? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have two teenage boys and we, yeah, we try and spend some time playing in the dirt. That's our thing. Our latest uh, craze is the uh, bushcraft. The what? Bushcraft. Yeah. I don't know what like that is. Like a hovercraft? No, bushcraft is kind of, you know, camping oh, out. Bushcraft. Making, yeah. I thought it was like bushcraft. a game, like Minecraft. <laughs> uh, I, heard, I heard witchcraft. So I was like, <laughs> what? Choose your own adventure. <laughs> I'm two, teenage, two teenage boys and trying to do less Minecraft and more bushcraft. Nice. I've given the oldest two a challenge, a survival challenge. Leave the house and wander around on the property with it. Whatever you can take with you. Let's see how long you can hack it. Oh. <laughs> What's their uh, longest stint? Not long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your longest stint? <laughs> A couple days. After that, I miss my memory foam mattress. <laughs> As a kid, though, uh, weeks, we used to go to wow. take off. And wow. Grew up in San Diego, so the weather was really mild. We were 
throw a rock and it would land in Takati. So we ran around the hills there quite a bit as teenagers before bush camp was uh, a term. And we had places set up out in the hills. Where we'd have our stashes of water and food, and cooking stuff. That sounds like a lot to me. People in the city pay money to go to camps like that. They do, <laughs> hip camp. <laughs> the original hip camp. <laughs> Dan camp. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing, hip camp. Uh, one of my uh, neighbors has, yeah. uh, she's got uh, 50 acres on, on one of the rivers there. She's got uh, some glamping set up. It's really beautiful, like old army tent. Ah, so glamping. Yeah, okay. she's got all the, like, the insides all done up, kind of army, old-timey style. Hmm. And then you rock up there, you get a dozen a dozen farm eggs and uh, some fresh milk. And a spot on the river, you can catch fish. Uh, no one around. You can walk out of your tent wearing whatever you want, nobody cares. Sounds pretty nice. It does. That's really sweet, Dan. Home's your favorite place. I should have said that. Um, if my family's watching, <laughs> <laughs> modification, home. <laughs> I usually spend, on average, uh, six to eight months on a boat somewhere. So there's the eight-month years that you're, uh, you are actually visiting home. Can we uh, keep on linking those moves together so we uh, just yep. keep it we'll keep them rolling? Bridge nav. Five zero meters, very north. Getting really low in altitude. I'm going to come up a little. Yeah. Well, the ship's moving now, so we can get Argus a little closer, but up higher. Oh, some of our viewers are saying that their favorite place to be is right here with us beneath the sea. Aww. We see you, and we're happy to have you. Back up a little and get some light on the cliff. Too close. Such an interesting ridge. This is, they were talking about some sedimentary layers they saw earlier. But every time we come on watch, it's just crust and sheet flows. Uh, fortunately, we have some rocks, but we're always looking for more. But maybe when we get up further upslope, uh, nice. like last time, we'll start to see more candidates. I saw them pick up on uh, just before watch change there. Yeah, yeah, they picked up some. Sweet Argus shot there. Yeah. Bump, bunk, a I little bump. <laughs> it looked like a little bump. <laughs> I was looking in Argus and not liking where I was going. <laughs> little bump. Crash. Can we periodically check in on the slurp jar and see what's going on there? Sure. Yeah. Oh. I'll let Antonella play with that. So. Hey, Tammy, do you got a favorite place on Earth? We can bump the, uh, what the suction? Yeah, I give it 50 and then. 75, 100. Uh, see here. I guess for me, it's going to have to be the same as Steve, anywhere around water. That's usually when I'm happiest. Whenever I can be close to water, it doesn't really matter what type of water. I like to explore and relax. So those are the best places anywhere I can sit and relax or paddleboard and just lay out on my board or go and explore into like little tide pools and such. You have a board, Tim, or a kayak? We have one of those stand up paddle boards? Yes, yeah, stand up paddle board. Oh, yeah. Those are nice. We like to go to, there's this place in Washington called Rattlesnake Lake, and it's just kind of a, basically um, formed by just overflow uh, from the mountains around it. 
And so you have to be kind of careful when you're swimming around or whatever in it because it's all rock. There's not much sand, but there's tree stumps everywhere. Mm. And it can get, depending on how much rain or snow we've had, it can be quite shallow. So you'll randomly kick a, a tree stump every now and then. So you just have to be careful. But because it's all runoff and water from the mountains, it's very, very clear. So it's pretty cool to just sit. You could just take the paddleboard out into the middle and just lay there, or just take it all in, and you're surrounded by a big mountain. Yeah, I don't know about the rest of the planet, but paddleboarding is and uh, kayaking have become real popular in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, it's my uh, when I lived in Hawaii, I surfed. Yeah. So it's kind of like when I. Moved to Washington. I served a couple times, but I'm like, yeah, no, way too cold for me. <laughs> way too cold. <laughs> uh, I'm a wimp when it comes to cold. Now, not when I was a child. I used to swim on the lakes in Wisconsin when there were still inches and inches of ice on them. Whoa. I just couldn't wait till summer. I wanted to be in the water. I enjoy being around the water too. I mean, what is it? Something like 70% of our global population lives within five miles of some sort of water. Yeah. It's connected to humanity. Yeah, I'm reading a book right now called Why We Swim, and it talks a lot about like different people in different areas and the adaptations they have developed like in some tribes they can they start free diving at such a young age they change their the way their eyes will dilate so they can actually see clearly in the water hmm. it's kind of cool and then i think last up would be antonella um, another ROV pilot, if you can introduce yourself and share with us some of your, one of your favorite places on Earth. Um, sure. Hi, I'm Antonella, sitting in the Argus seat. Um, bad at favorites because I usually end up listing 10 things. <laughs> um, I really love Baja California, spent a bit of time there, and the Channel Islands off of California, two of my yeah, favorite places. Nice. I too enjoy time in the Channel Islands, Santa Cruz and San Miguel. Yeah. Catalina, San Rafael. I've only been there on here, on Nautilus. <laughs> they actually let it's you get off the boat or just no, sit there and look? No, just sit and look. And dream. Yeah. You're like, oh, land, so close, but yet so far away. Can we do a snap yeah. zoom on that stock while we're here? No need to stop, just want to yeah. do it. Because yeah. I think that's another individual of what we just sampled, and that would tell us something about, you know, this particular animal. It looks to be more like a stoloniferin now, because that stock uh, looks more spongy in nature. Thanks, good, all set. Dan, do you want to catch up to the ship a bit, or keep going? All right, keep going. Roger. Bridge now. Sorry, lay back 40 meters. It's not too bad. Five zero meters, very north. <laughs> yeah, so that, if that was the same thing uh, as we what we sampled, this su suggests that this sample was a stoloniferin uh, because that sponge, uh, that, that stalk it was on, was it clearly a sponge stalk in this recent observation. So that helps to narrow down that unidentified octocoral a little bit. Got it. I tagged it too. So. Cool. Very, very, very high density of polyps, though, uh, for a stoloniferin, which I think is pretty extraordinary. We did sample something that was uh, remarkably similar to this, but a uh, little bit different from uh, 2019 uh, in this area. We we're exploring Kingman Reef in Palmyra. Let's see. Depth was 1950 meters, which actually isn't too far off from where we are but it looks very, very similar. Stoloniferous octocoral.
Clavularia day, 1950 meters. Is that photograph there? Yeah. Probably on a different sponge stock, but still the uh, same kind of habitat. Any luck with the hydraulics there? Caught out. Or with the suction? That's cool. All right. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, it says this watch has a lot of calm, cool energy to it. Um, they're wondering what's the most exciting thing we've seen and if the audience could tell since we're kind of chill. <laughs> <laughs> It's just say early. It like 5 a.m. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost. Any snap zooms on that uh, little outcrop there? Yeah, go ahead, Timmy. Oh. Yeah, that's Ooh. good. I'll get close. Yeah. Got a golden coral there, Chrysogorgia, as well as uh, uh, not sure what that is. Uh, looks like you have uh, Hemicorallium uh, is the underlying coral. And you've got some uh, some regrowth by something. Zoanthid, possibly. Yep. Okay. Thanks for that. I mean, I don't know. I think we were got quite excited about the rock yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. We did a celebration after that, for sure. So simple joys in life. <laughs> Red book up here. Yep. Is there a note in there about the tilt? The Argus tilt or the pan and tilt? Uh, Zeus tilt. It's too fast up. I have not made a note of that now. Slow down and fast up. Steve, the zoanthids, are they only found uh, in, as associates down here or? Uh, Just wondering. That's a good question. Um, sometimes you can find zoanthids you know, free living on the side of a rock, uh, where you know where you have good flow or something like that. They'll grow in clusters. But yeah, typically they they colonize and parasitize other substrates, you know, biogenic substrates, things that are mm -hmm. produced by other animals. Um, just seems to be the easiest mode of living for them. sponges and corals and all of the parts and pieces of the skeleton that they produce seem to be preferred. Those habitat forming creatures of the yep. deep. Yeah. Why do it yourself when you can just take over what <laughs> someone else has done? Oh. Nature. You can also try uh, bumping that jar forward and backwards. And go okay. to the six and five. All sections off, of course. Yeah. What words would you use to describe the formations that we're looking at right Might now. Have to go all the way around. Yeah, the verse just doesn't work. Uh, it early. looks pretty crusty. Um, a lot of botryoidal textures when you zoom into some of these rock surfaces, so it indicates that you know there's probably a fair bit of iron manganese crust buildup, but it looks like some of these could be lava tubes um, and sheet flows. Broken broken uh, lava tubes and sheet flows. Volcanic in nature, almost certainly. Oh, yes. We had a viewer that fell asleep before we managed to get a rock last night. They want to know, did, did we get the rock? We did. Woo. <laughs> got a couple. Oh yeah, it happened. And I think it might be less than 12 hours ago, so you could rewind and see that. Did 
They uh, they pitched a plate, didn't they? Doesn't say in the red book. Let me look at the porch. Yeah. They pitch two plates. Right. I believe they said that one. I sat down, I just I forgot. Steve, do you want to be making this turn to waypoint six before or after the waypoint? Um yeah, can you zoom out again? Sure. Uh, kind of go into the northeast there um yeah so th this was kind of a weird uh turn i th i think uh in short we'd like to go straight to waypoint seven from waypoint five okay if that makes any sense so skip six it looks more downslope than i wanted to go sure. even though seven is downslope it's about a hundred meter drop or so from waypoint five um i don't think we need to follow the waypoints precisely okay uh, it, it might just be easiest that from waypoint five to seven we um, just pick up a little bit and then you know, drop down because uh, I don't think we're going to be able to maintain contact with the bottom. Okay. But I would like to see what's around five before we uh, drop down to seven. Better. Thanks. The bathy around here was a little squirrely. Um, as you can see, there's some holes here and there. So uh, it's also seemed like it was steeper in parts. Some mystery, great. Yep. Bridge nav. Five zero meters, bearing north. Steve, we've got a viewer wondering if you see um, any sort of zonation between coral species and rock type. Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, rock type, um, uh, that could mean a couple things. Um, yeah, it could mean things that are attached to rocks of different you know, origins, like carbonates versus volcanic. Um, it could be, you know, relate to rock types from, you know, something that's more crusty versus something that's maybe more fresh. Um, that, you know, those have differences in coral communities too. Something that's freshly um, extruded from the seafloor and cooled is probably not going to have any or, you know, maybe some some of the more rapid settlers on it. Um, corals in their nature are not, you know, rapid uh, reproducers and settlers of fresh rocks. So there's oftentimes uh, many years process for that to be colonized but out here um, what we're talking about and what we're dealing with in most parts of the depth of the seamount is animals that uh, attach to crust um, communities mm -hmm. so uh, all this manganese crust is a uh, pretty solid for corals to attach to corals might live for decades to centuries but you know the crust accumulates at a slower rate um, so the, the animals we find here are probably going to be uh, pretty similar in nature at this depth. But as we go shallower, uh, we're probably going to see differences in corals. But that usually isn't tied to changes in the rock. Um, okay. There's sometimes, sometimes you can find in areas where there um, might be very uh, loosely held rock, so kind of like friable or maybe uh, rock that is unstable for an area that has a tendency to uh, you know, detach from the cliffside and fall down slope. A lot of corals will not settle on those habit, uh, those places, uh, or they'll if they do settle, uh, they'll be lost. Uh, so you know that rock falls out of place, for example, that coral is going to fall, and so the, there's a propensity for you know very little sediment settlement and buildup of colonies on these types of habitats. Um, so yeah, de they, they definitely prefer 
uh, more stable terrain. Um, this seems ideal right here in this general area. Um, but, you know, of course, they're always going to preferentially settle in an area with better flow conditions that will allow them to grow and um, they feed more effectively. Got it. So you're just talking about corals in general. They don't choose by species what type of rocks as long as it's a hard substrate. Yeah, not, not necessarily, although you know, there, there actually is some ongoing research that um, looks at microbial uh, biofilms and microbial uh, layers that um, might be present on certain types of rock uh, that might um, it either prohibit or uh, rather inhibit or uh, favor coral settlement, but that's kind of just in the hypothetical stages uh, at the moment for at least the deep sea environment. That's pretty well established for the shallow waters. Got it. And follow-up question, does rock pH have an impact on colonization of corals and sponges? I don't know if anybody's looking at that. I, I'm not sure about the rock, but definitely, uh, you know, the water chemistry does have an effect uh, on you know, where corals are more likely to be found, for sure. Do rocks have pH? Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. I guess it would be the pH of the water around the rocks, like the water yeah. chemistry. No, for geochemical analysis, is pH one of the things they look at? Yes. Yeah. Was that a sea star we just flew by? It's gone now. Looks like we're working up a bit of a channel here. If I, if I didn't know any better, if I didn't trust this site, I would say let's pick up a rock here, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be an option. I think we've learned. It's just a tease. Yeah. <laughs> but there's definitely something. It looks like something's collected here in the past. It's kind of a notch in the side. And it looks like this stuff could have fallen down slope and then got cemented in to the hillside at a later date by crust. Fish there. in there. Fish. Great spot for a fish. You can push in a bit on him if you want. As we go by. Yeah, whatever you can do. We're just in transect mode right now. Okay. So whatever you can, whatever we can see, we'll see. Fish. Sea star. Bridge now. Five zero meters, very north. I wonder as we pass through here, I just, the geological features look really kind of cool in this area. Can, does it tell us anything about what happened here in terms of geological formation by just looking at how it's showing up? Or do we really need those samples in order to reconstruct what happened here historically? In some, in some cases, you can tell a little bit about the geology of an area just by observing. For example, the group, uh, the last watch, was telling us about um, some sedimentary layers. So you know, layers you can see from deposition um, of material over time. Uh, that If you know part of that breaks away, you can usually see in a cross-section uh, what's there. But... Um, yeah, I, I would say in this area it's probably a little bit more difficult um, mm -hmm. because a lot of what we're looking at is crust. Uh, you know, these crusty textures which tend to smooth out some of the underlying uh, rock. 
We're loose. Oh yeah. You want to you want to go for it on the fly? Sure. That, that one, one looks a little pretty that, big for sampling. Big one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I always did. The one on. I needed a new one, coffee table. The one right by the uh, lasers is Liz Antonella. There okay. That one. Yeah. All right. You don't want to the ship? No, I think we can get it on the fly. No pressure. Oops. Either the one on the just behind the jaw right now, or yeah, whatever loose one. That one. Uh, yeah, what about the one to the upper right here? Is it this one? That one? Yeah. That one's not loose. No? Okay. Just go for whatever you can then. Oh, oh no. No, is it, it is. Let's Ooh. punch yeah. that rock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock punching the uh, Yeah, you better stop. Bridge, Nev. Hold position. That one's got might take a little longer. Oops. It, I, th I think just getting something is important if it's, yeah. If oh, that's a rock there. <laughs> we don't have to excavate. Uh, if we don't have to excavate, the better. We can grab it. I'm just trying to get a good grab on it, but I'm pretty far away. Any grabs. Grab. Okay. Pick it up. Uh, uh. I don't have a good grab on it. It's a good grab. Okay. Great. Beautiful grab. Uh, don't worry about go. turning it around. It's pretty precarious. Okay. Um, so just let's stow it in uh, the starboard box. Okay. I think is what we'll have room for for that size. I think I'm, uh, yeah, I think you got a good grab. Mm. Are you grip force? Uh, oh, I can move that up. Now you can get a good grip. Okay. <laughs> Did that... When you adjust grip force, does it... No, it shouldn't. Release it? Okay. No. Well, I, didn't, I was looking at the controller. I didn't see what happened. No. Are you grip force 9 now? Yep. Okay. Is it just down in that cloud? I think so. Okay. Me back up. So. Okay. Yeah, see it laying there. Ah, I see. see. They're going to have to uh, snatch it up. Maybe you can see just in the front here. Run out of time. I can't see it all. Oh, do I have it? Oh, there we go. 
Okay, hold what you got there. Okay. Oh. Okay, just hold, hold on to it. Yep. It's halted. Careful victory roll now. Yeah. Great pick. There's enough crust on that, I think. Ready to stow it? Store it? Yep, whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, starboard Is box. Is that the sample salvo? No. Oh. Okay. I haven't sample salvoed yet. <laughs> okay, sorry, I just don't know what happened with the camera. Starboard box D is open. Okay. Okay, can that come around? I got the hydraulics. Okay. This one might need to go into one of the larger outer compartments. It's kind of an odd shape. So if we need to put it in uh, E or F, I think we can do that. Yeah, that would work too. Sorry. We put some pretty big rocks, multiple rocks, usually in E and F. Thank uh, you. Plenty of space. Pushing wrong buttons over here. F right, box truck. Sounds good. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Rock sampling on the fly at 2,000 meters. It's the best, uh -huh. it's the best kind of sampling. Awesome. <laughs> Good to put in another ship move? Yep. Bridge nav. Uh, five zero meters okay. bearing zero zero five. Okay, I'm halted. Ready for dive salvo? Why does that happen? Okay. Oh, no. Slight bearing change is zero zero five. Zero zero five, right. Mm. Question coming in about plankton. Um, is there a lot of plankton down here? Phytoplankton, uh, and go zooplankton. With the no on the phytoplankton, <laughs> like a live phytoplankton, but just plankton in general. They're presuming it's zooplankton. Um, but do we see any diatoms down here? Uh, it, the only diatoms you'll see down here are probably the carcasses. Sediment? 
Yeah, the carcasses <laughs> of diatoms that have fallen from above in the form of marine snow. Um, but generally, Practice so here. diatoms um, are a higher, typically a higher latitude uh, plankton. Uh, they are they prefer waters that are very nutrient rich. That's why um, I'm told it's not very not. You know, they're big, long, you know, form big, long chains in some cases. A lot of the plankton that we see enough. in these latitudes, you know, the tropical latitudes, are actually um, uh, smaller celled plankton, uh, you know, bacteria sized cells. Um, so, you know, these waters are pretty nutrient poor in, in parts of the tropics. So, you get uh, you know, typically deeper dwelling. Uh, planktonic species, you know, bacterial sized. Um, yeah, those are those are most of what you see out here. So you're not going to find the big, long, meaty diatom chains that you find at higher latitudes that are more nutrient rich. Yeah. Switch some cameras around. Yep. Thank you. The plankton community depends on the uh, on the. I guess the nutrients and the productivity of the water. Yeah. 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 I don't know what that is, but I like the way it's what, moving. What button was just pushed? <laughs> Can you zoom in? I switched um, starboard rail cam to bucket and bio box cam to port rail. Okay. Thanks. Oh, it's a hermit crab. Is yeah. it? It's a hermit crab with a zoanthid on its back. We, <laughs> they, they saw one just okay. after um, can zoom out. After we changed over watch last night. Yeah. I want to uh, put 4K in. Uh, I thought you said they sell them. Like okay. they s not they sell. <laughs> they sell them. They, like they, they sell. sell those yeah. hats, those hermit crab. Yeah. Hats. Oh, how many corallium there? Yeah. So, the going back to the the plankton question, mm -hmm. um, there's a group called cyanobacteria, uh, which are really kind of deep dwelling uh, phytoplankton that live out. Uh, typically in the more oligotrophic waters of the ocean, nutrient poor again. Um, so th those are probably make up most of the mass of the phytoplankton in these areas um, in the surface ocean. And then down here, it's still just no no live phytoplankton, but you might find uh, you know zooplankters and other small things maybe living near or at the um, the seabed. Cyano, did you say cyanoplankton? Cyanobacteria, yeah. Oh, cyanobacteria. Yeah, they're bacteria sized plankton. Is that There's also known as blue green algae? Exactly. The same thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a Prochlorococcus and Synecococcus. They're two um, types of cyanobacteria that you usually find in more oligotrophic waters. No luck with the uh, suction sampler, eh? It's all right. We'll we'll try the the dick method. <laughs> I, I didn't even see any sediment go through there, which you is you did definitely. Yeah. Strange. The deck method. Is there a protocol for that? There is. <laughs> we uh, fill the pick the uh, the nozzle up and hang it in the bumper, fill it with water, and then. Rapidly uh, move it to the deck, <laughs> and it kind of creates a backwards suction, and it usually vomits all the samples out on the deck that are stuck in there. The hose makes a a U-turn underneath the vehicle, so that allows us to pull it in and out. <coughs> it's on a bungee in there and it, it makes kind of a pretty cute turn there. All right. We continuing our uh, transect? Yeah, we're almost there. In Ooh. fact, uh, we can kind of do a lazy turn nav through this uh, waypoint. We don't have to hit it precisely. Roger. Would you prefer the turn starting before or after the waypoint? Yeah, you can start it now. Okay. We want to uh, 
stay crazy low for a minute while I'm going to come around this rock and get this high enough. Hello, Alaska, Netherlands. Good morning, Texas. And good morning, San Jose. And some, uh, maybe a grab for Emil's sand waves there. Yeah, you can take it just a, a screen grab of it with the lasers. Flat spot. I don't know if these are the these are current. Uh, these don't look like the ones that are wave derived. There might just current, be current. Yeah. Bridge nav. Uh, five zero meters zero four zero. Bearing change zero four zero. We'll Roger. start a lazy turn. I'm gonna add that to my list. Potential titles: the lazy turn. Lazy turn. Not to be confused with the lazy turn about birds, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great name for a dive bar, the lazy turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't exactly answer this question. What country are we working out of right now? Um. What do you mean? Like, where are the U.S.? Is this the U.S.? We're in U.S. waters, yeah. So this is U.S. waters? Yeah. Okay, we're in U.S. waters. There you go. I was like, we're not in the monument. And are we, st so we're still in the um, economic zone? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Got it. However, yeah, we're technically on a non US flag chip. So that, that inc increases the complexity <laughs> a little bit. Yep. Good morning, England. Good morning, Melbourne. Australia. Thanks for joining us. Send your questions. Steve, do we have a revised uh, recovery time? Uh, I haven't confirmed it yet, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it, uh, as soon as the expedition leader uh, is alert, Roger. Uh, we'll make it official. Oh, but I think the, the intention is to uh, extend to off, 12. Off okay. bottom at 8 or past 8. Yeah, if the dive extends to noon, then off bottom. Uh, it'll take about 100 minutes. Well, well, depends. I was calculating off 2,000 meters, which would be waypoint 7. I was thinking if we did have to recover by 8. But um, 15 meters a minute. We go to waypoint yeah. 10. I was doing 20 meters a minute. But... Even 15 is our standard. 15 standard. 20 is uh, optimal, optimistic. Depends on who's <laughs> in here and how many. 20 holes. meters down speed, as I've seen. Well, <laughs> yeah, that depends on how many rocks we have versus ah, how many yes. weights we can drop. So, but our, our conservative is 15. Kind of a general question coming in. Um, has there been any studies on the consciousness of deep sea animals, specifically the ambush predators? Consciousness? Yeah, that's, I don't, let's see, I'm gonna read a little are, bit more. Are they conscious that they're predators? Hmm. Yeah. What are they, br what are their brains look like? <laughs> That is a great question, and I can't speak to it. I can't either. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any studies looking at that, and I'd have to better define the question. There we go. Now we're starting to see the plexor. It's right around at 2,000 meters. Was that what you expected? 
Uh, that one's that one's actually quite deep. Can we get a zoom in on that to document sure. it? I mean, it, around 2,000 meters is uh, kind of where they start to appear, but we're a little bit deeper sure, than that, which is, uh, I think, uh, we, we set a record last year during our uh, monument cruise in 134 uh, for the deepest plexorid observation. So this might actually top that. Okay. Zoom in there. Although it's probably pretty close. I think the last one was in the 2,000 meter-ish range. But we have sampled uh, this particular plexorid on other occasions. Um, still don't have an ID for it, but uh, possibly something related to Placogorgia at these depths. But this would be a pretty significant depth increase. I'm not sure what our last one was. I think it was in the 2000s uh, meters. All right. Great zoom. Thanks. Screen grab and on our way. Yes, see, too. Oh, well, you're getting it. And all the polyps are closing up. Yeah. All right, great, thank you. You know, th there's actually a fair bit of diversity here. Um, how would you feel about an on-the-fly Niskin pull? Yeah, can do. Steve just asked for a Niskin pool. That's basically a water sample. Um, it's doing some pretty cool in uh, investigations around eDNA, which is environmental DNA, that can potentially give us some answers about the diversity of species down here. Yeah. It's going to be a uh, Niskin 3, it looks like. Okay. Yeah, Niskin 3. And if you happen to be interested in famous people in oceanography, go ahead and uh, do a Google search and look up the history of the Niskin bottle. Thanks. Interesting characters involved in that development. The Niskin was from Norway? Yeah, he was a, a Nor Norwegian fellow. The original okay. yes, quote-unquote Niskin bottle was uh, called the Nansen up. bottle, which was improved upon by fellow named Niskin in the 60s. Sample water at different depths. Keep it isolated, get it back to the surface. So, oh, that's not three, is it? Oh, that is three. Yeah, that blue one should be three. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. So in that sample in the immediate area, we have uh, Metallogorgia, Hemichorallium. Uh, what else? Or some some uh, black corals, bathypathies. Is there a golden coral? Uh, most likely, I didn't see one in the immediate area, but it's a possibility. We've definitely see them, seen them recently. Okay. to answer this question. There are currently, I hope I get it right, eight people on watch at any given time. Um, got me sitting in the communication station. We have our scientists. This particular watch, we've got three. Our video engineer, two ROV pilots, and a navigator. So eight people on the team in the control room during watch exploring with you all. Call me crazy, but some of these rocks look loose up here. I'm just 
not don't want to sample them yet but what's your assessment front row what do you think yeah. i say that and then as soon as we get closer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i look good I was from afar say crazy but <laughs> yeah i've seen this story so, before <laughs> you have to have a certain level of crazy to sit in the back row <laughs> <laughs> and keep trying <laughs> Is there a golden number yeah. for no, rock these samples? Are solid. Like, no, is our good. goal to we 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 want to take ten or is oh. there a target number? Uh, no, we don't have a target here. Okay. Um, as many as possible, and still make progress. We want to cover a dive uh, track as much as possible. So we can't sit in one place and sample rocks all day. Um, but. Uh, as many as possible, and usually a few along the dive track at different intervals provides us some good picture of you know how the crust composition might change across the dive. In the monuments, though, we could only take 10 per dive. Yep. Hello from the UK. Question, does seismic activity have an impact on our dives? Or have we ever experienced an impact from seismic activity while diving? I haven't experienced one on this boat, but um, we have, I have on other boats. We were on the, on the German vessel Sona poking around somewhere between New Zealand and Fiji in a caldera and it erupted there was a giant boom it sounded like something hit the boat and the captain took off at seven knots with the ROV in the water <laughs> and we started screaming you're going too fast you're going too fast and he said well I don't care about your ROV I'm trying to save the boat <laughs> Wow. and he uh, yeah he went for a couple kilometers and where's he going like, he just he wanted to get away from the caldera. He was afraid there would be uh, oh. something that would come up mm. that would. Uh, Did something come up? No, and he, we had the nav pull down and the ROV in the water. It was quite exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we went back the next day and it was just blown out. Wow. There was like dust everywhere. We couldn't. Couldn't see anything first time. So we went to the other side of the caldera and uh, were able to continue working. I think he was afraid there was a giant, would be like a giant gas plume come up, hmm. a big bubble that the boat wouldn't float on, basically. <laughs> Has that happened before? That happened aboard the Sona, yeah. The ship sank? Oh, no, 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 oh. but there have been stories. I don't know if they're true or not. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's also stories of ships getting hit by lava balloons or lava bombs that float up. They have had uh, stuff, issues in the Gulf of Mexico where they have uh, gas. I was going to say gas hydrates. Uh, well, also uh, blow out of a, of a gas Oh. Gas well, you know, when they hit a pocket, they get a big bubble that comes up. almost there. I'm like, are we there yet? <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> I don't know. But are we there? <laughs> this is actually a pretty decent spot for coral diversity, uh, better than it has been. Um, Metallogorgia, bathypathies, kind of 
Hemicorelli and Paragorgia coralloides, these typical cast of characters. Uh, pretty normal for this depth range. Um, densities aren't crazy, but at least they're fairly regular, so there must be some good flow conditions through here. Bridge nav. You want to come down a bit? Come down 10. 5 zero meters, bearing zero four five. Zero four five, slight bearing change. We got time for a zoom here. I'm kind of waiting at the end of my leash. Just picked one at random, Steve. That's fine. Yeah, it's the bubblegum coral. This looks like a bubblegum coral, Paragorgia. Uh, it, it looks very similar to ones that have been colonized by zoanthids. This one doesn't seem to have been colonized by zoanthids yet. Polyps in there, maybe. They cruise off the west coast, and there were just forests of these guys that are sure. two yeah. meters tall, and trunk as thick as your arm. Yeah, that that'll happen. Wait, did you say a trunk as thick as your arm? Yeah. Yeah, they get quite large um, at the higher latitudes. Uh, Pergorgia arborea. Uh, they're trees. Trees, ocean trees. Oh, they look like trees. Wow. They were trying to get a, off of a dead one, trying to get the stump off the manipulator, and we couldn't get it. And we got pretty western with it, too. I'm going to look up and see if I can find some images of that. There's, um, on Vimeo, there's, uh, the Ropos vehicle has a video of that. And uh, some images. All in right. Particular crews. Good with the pictures back here when you're ready. Oh yeah. Do you see? Oh. Hello from Germany. One okay. thing I always found difficult in the ocean was a sense of scale. Can you please share with us how you go on measuring things in this environment? Yep, so we're uh, at center screen here. You've got two scaling lasers at uh, 10 centimeters apart. And by putting those next to something, we can tell approximately how large it is. You can also use some pretty fancy, or maybe not so fancy, software to actually uh, measure things uh, in the computer. If we take an image of it, we can scale. Uh, what we're looking at or what we're trying to measure with those lasers and get a pretty accurate measurement. And now that I think about it, uh, some some uh, some systems have multiple lasers, uh, you know, either maybe two or three lasers where you can do some pretty fancy geometry um, depending on what what it is you're trying to scale but i was thinking for uh for if you're trying to do a lot of measurements of things like corals and like super vertical things it might be useful to have a like vertically mounted uh laser so it's like two dots on top of each other when you're trying to measure something on the ground it might be a little difficult because there might be slight differences in in length but might be easier to kind of paint the target with the vertical lasers for things that are tall, like coral colonies and sponges. Yeah. Well, here's another that's kind of interesting. Do we do, is there a downward facing camera and do we ever put together photo mosaics of what we're seeing on the bottom? A really nice one of the whale fall that we uh, turned into a 3D model. It's on the website. So the answer is yes. 
We, uh, yeah, we did quite a bit last year uh, with the main camera, with the Zeus camera there. And we fly all the way around. We were doing uh, sponges and uh, rocky outcrops. So we fly all the way around and then we look down and look forward. And, uh, they put together a photo mosaic, but the kind of a popular one seems lately is um, doing the 3D model, the photogrammetry from the from, uh, taking a whole bunch of pictures. The software has come light years. You used to have to have uh, calibrated stereo cameras and specialized software, and now it's, you can do that with your iPhone. Wait, so we sent an iPhone on her? That's awesome. <laughs> no, but the, <laughs> the technology has come out of out of that. Yeah. Specifically, Roman's lab. And, uh, open CV. So. We've also done a lot of uh, mosaics of the um, hydrothermal vents, of course. I'm guessing the public has access. We can just kind of do a, a oh, web yeah. search on the website, and you can probably yeah. find them. Yeah, and Bari has also done some uh, spectacular uh, photo mosaics. Uh, same with Ropos. They're on their on their uh, website as well. So there you go. What was that uh, time calculation for Waypoint Seven? You were saying uh, earlier you made uh, Nav. Yeah, um, so just looking at that again, if if we need to be on deck by 8 um, at 15 meters a minute from 2,000 meters, it's about 130 minutes, so we'd actually need to be leaving the sea floor soon if that was the case, um, and that was assuming we were somewhere between uh, waypoint 5 and 7. Well, um, yeah, ML uh, was fine last night with extending uh, if we needed to. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, he gets the message. Uh, I sent him a message already. Okay. Um, so I'm reasonably certain that we're going to be okay extending. There was no reason that we said we couldn't. Great. And so if we go all the way to waypoint 10 and leave the sea floor from 1,500 meters at 15 meters a minute, it'll be about 100 minutes to the service. Yep. There was also a um, photo mosaic, uh, basically, um, it, 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 uh, geez, I'm having a brain cramp. What, what's the uh, IMAX theater? So the Germans did a um, an entire uh, caldera in, uh, in the Tonga Trench somewhere. Ooh. I forget, not oh, Fiji, but um, they made a IMAX movie out of it. And there's some pretty uh, spectacular. Uh, photo mosaics of the, some of the um, hydrothermal vents that we found there. So they're out there. I don't think we're generating any on this particular dive or expedition, but they're out there. Can you uh, show me HIPAC uh, waypoint 7 and uh, northeastwards? Sure. Just for a second. All right. Thanks. Need any numbers? Um, yeah, it's it's at least a couple kilometers I have on my uh, maybe a kilometer and a half on my uh, log from uh, waypoint five to ten. Yep, that's what this shows as well as the sea crow flies. Yep. Sea crow. <laughs> Yeah, the, it sounds like there was some slow going last night. So, 
We're a little bit behind, but it's not terrible. Nothing we can't make up. We're actually making some really good time since uh, since we got on watch here, covering some ground. All right, Speedy Steve. <laughs> Cracking the whip. Can you uh, snap zoom on this uh, branch that's coming in? Sure. Go ahead, Tammy. All right, so we got there bamboo coral. Unbranched. All right, all set, thanks. This is for Steve and Rebecca, another data question. Um, do we share and collaborate our data, knowledge, images with Okeanos? Um, There's a three-way. Uh, so, okay. oh, yeah, Okeanos, um, us, and uh, Falcor. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, th theoretically, uh, and you know, all all those entities have their data open access. Um, so, you know, that it's available. What does it's that available. mean? So, what is, so I can go and, like, what does open access mean for the general public? Yeah, the, the data is freely available to use. Um, different organizations might have different uh, availability, you know, different mechanisms to, to get that data. So, for example, you know, the dives might be available on YouTube or uh, the mapping data might be available through different repositories. Um, every and every one of those entities has a different mechanism to distribute the data, um, but generally, yeah, anyone who wants to can go download parts of the data or can find that uh, video freely available on YouTube or um, you know even get it from from other repositories uh, if it's stored there. So, yeah, anyone can access it. I wonder if there's a benefit to having one repository for this type of work, like a one-stop shop in terms of accessibility. I'm just curious. No, okay. No, yeah, no it, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, th that, that would be ideal, <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's like, yeah, it, you know, th there are going to be different policies amongst different organizations and especially with the government about you know how they want to distribute the data so that's up to them i would suppose how they want to host it and keep track of who uses it because all of those metrics are really interesting and important uh, for those who collect the data and make sure it's being used and how it's being used who's using it uh, because it, you know having your data freely available um, isn't the end goal you kind of want to have you know you kind of want to keep track on you know how it's being used so that you can follow up and you know make sure that if there are any findings that have been made, uh